The year of sandwiches. Oh uh, my I, gosh, we did it. We well, we got out. Yes, we and got I, out. It's like that point where you think we're safe, like in a in a horror movie, where you're like, "Oh, thank God, we got out." And then, like, you turn and there's just another horror awaiting you on the other side. That's why I don't sound very enthused, which is so sad. But it's kind of like after a year of like <laughs> so much stress. Yeah, I'm just still trying to catch my breath. I'm just like, whew, well. I think we're okay. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all a little afraid to get our hopes up uh, with good reason, especially because I'm still being tagged in all the tweets that say like, remember when Christine mm-hmm. said 2020 was going to be great and she feels like she has nothing to complain about. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I know. So now I'm just going to not say, a, I'm not even going to say I, I want a sandwich because Lord knows we're going to have a bread <laughs> shortage and that would be my worst nightmare come to Actually, reality. wow. I didn't even know. I'm how telling we could- you. I didn't know how we could manifest a bad sandwich prediction, but um, hmm. Okay, so everyone, be careful with your bread. Just hang on real tight. Whether it's your sourdough, your rye, whatever you like. Just sourdough for me, thanks. What was the bread that your mom made that I stole from you? Stole and like put conditioner all over the mirrors because that bread was delicious. My mother makes very good bread. She drops it off at our house. That's one of the perks of moving home is she drops off a loaf of bread at our house like every week. Um, does she say anything or does she just leave it in no, the night? No, she literally like- will just leave it here. And sometimes she forgets her key and it'll just be like on the porch in the rain. And I'm like, cool, but I'm going to eat it anyway. Duly noted. So if you want to uh, just completely be a, a crazy murderer. Triangulate and you me. Get it- <laughs> You just got to find Christine's house and then you just leave bread there and she'll eat it. It doesn't matter. It's the house in Kentucky where, oh, I thought you were going to say it's a house in Kentucky where there's a loaf of bread just sitting on the porch. That's me. (laughs) No, you could just switch it out with poison bread. She'll never know. She's just going to gobble it up. Oh, I see. Do you have any other ways maybe people could end my life this year in 2021 that have to be sandwiches, apparently? Plenty. Uh, We'll stick with that one for this episode and every episode we'll just do a- How to murder Christine this time. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Well, uh, anyway, I'm looking at 2021, the new year, as like, I know things are not different as far as like, you know, from one hour to the next, but I feel like symbolically, it's a good like start over, like fresh start, you know, just let's try again. Let's try again. It's (laughs) it's the redo year that they'll be talking about in history books. Yeah, yeah. They're like the aftermath of the apocalypse, like the like uh the rebuilding, you know. The we will rebuild. Yeah, oh, it's exactly. Been a, it's been a rough. What? How many? We're six days in, and we're getting we're getting there. We're six days in, and I'm already like kind of like forming nervous ticks, just like in <laughs> case something goes down. I like I I remember seeing all the videos. You know, a week ago, I'm talking about it like it was yesteryear. I guess it was. It was. But um, but all these videos of people being like, we're gonna walk real quietly into yes. 2021. <laughs> Not going to touch anything. We're just going to touch anything. (laughs) Just look around and see what happens. It's like what my parents told me when we went to like any toy store. (laughs) Like don't touch anything. The grocery store because I was prone to steal a lot of food from the grocery store as a child. Uh, Were you? Were you like Oliver Oliver Twist? (laughs) I guess so. I would just, I was really captivated by packaging. Like I was very easy to trick. And so uh, if it was within stroller arm reach, I would grab it. It wasn't so, like you were like 10 and you were like, I got to pocket all these goods. No, no, no. Like, I mean, I did think that, but it wasn't like I wasn't going to get food if I went home without right. grabbing things. <laughs> but my parents would go shopping and then we would get in the car and they'd be like, I didn't buy that. I, did you buy that? And I would just have like a, like a, like I'd be hoarding them. You'd just be like, little I, snacks. You were like, I bought it. Don't worry, mom. <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> I oh gave a wink God. to the cashier. She knew what it meant. So apparently, <laughs> she you gave one of those Gemini smiles, and she was like, "All right." I, you I sure did. I, I was I was a schmoozer from the beginning. <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. Apparently, once I was in a stroller next to a kid in another stroller, and I just like took their pacifier. I never like had a pacifier growing up. I just took their pacifier, put it in my mouth. And then Wait spit it out and said, that's gross in German. And then put it back in their mouth. And my mom was like, yeah, that's how you lived your what life. What if that was me and I and I still have this weird memory of like this weird German kid just grabbed my pacifier <laughs> and then insulted my product and then threw it back at me. I was like, I'm just captivated by packaging. But it was really tricky <laughs> me because it really wasn't as good as it made it out to be. But maybe that was you. That would have been, wow. 
You know, to this day, I'm still really intrigued by, um, like, mouth, like, my, like, chewy, um, I'm trying to avoid saying the embarrassing way of this, but I don't know another way. Um, So I am one of those people who, like, really wish that it was socially acceptable as an adult to, like, have something to chew on, like a chew toy. Uh Like, um, I think I've told you about this before, but, like, there are just some things you look at and you're like, wow, my molars are itching. Are itching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, specifically, like, Dr. Scholl's foot inserts. (gasps) (laughs) Ew. Every time I, well, it'd be clean. I would just go buy it at the store. Yeah, but, but it's every probably time, filled with who knows what. I don't care. My, my molars don't okay, care. Okay, this is how we're going to kill make... M this year. We're going to put Dr. Scholl's inserts inside a sandwich <laughs> and say, here you go. Look, my jaw calls the shots and, and when it comes to this kind of stuff. But I see it and I'm like, I just want to chew the shit out of you. Oh, my God. So, uh, so yeah, you could kill me that way. You could put some weird stuff I'm in I'm going to put plastic. it in your sandwich. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It could be a Dr. Scholl's foot sandwich. That'd be fine. Okay. <laughs> spit everywhere I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway i'm saying like if adults could have pacifiers like i might have one purely to just chew i bet on you they I, like, do make TV. like for people with oral fixations as that's as you me seem to have um i bet you they do make like something you can chew on like a pencil d- you can actually chew on or something yeah or like the pencil erasers in middle uh-huh. school okay i would chew on those like they i were remember done. the taste still to this very day mm-hmm. well anyway i have the oral fixation because a little german baby stole my <laughs> oh there, so. i caused great so here we are the most freudian <laughs> thing ever you're telling me in our adult life that i caused your childhood trauma and oral Bingo. fixation got it yes. got it and now i'm planning to murder you because i guess you're my dad or something you're welcome how you're welcome works? anyway oh, uh happy 2021 man uh and uh hopefully this is another wonderful year for and that's why we drink we're coming up on four years now i know another wonderful year just like the year we <laughs> bailed on our whole tour and questioned our entire sanity and i i will okay we did question our sanity we did bail on our tour but i will say in terms of uh if our if fingers crossed our podcast you know goes goes on for a very long time this is probably the most relaxing year we'll ever have that's again. true it was like we were preparing <laughs> mentally for travel and then we suddenly stayed home a lot and you it's and like, i are hey, good at staying home <laughs> take a nap for a year because things are about to get real rocky yeah, in 2021 yeah. like you're gonna be doing a lot of stuff that's so. true and the year after the it was the year after the like mega tour where we had to record and do everything on top of itself so it was kind of like wait it we was self care. Have to record, yeah, yeah. Self care. We deserved it. We deserved yeah. it. So, so. Uh, anyway, I was thinking because we just kind of, I don't know if we necessarily made predictions for ourselves. I did make my sandwich prediction last episode about 2021, um, and that's going well. A lot of people have asked me already if I've been having sandwiches. The answer is yes, plenty. Um, but in terms of predictions, I think that this is a very delightful episode. Uh, topic that I'm going to cover for you. Oh, today. can I make? Um, can I say something before we like yeah. for the intro before we start? Mm-hmm. I'm. I know you just said it was going to be delightful, and now I'm just going to make everybody bummed <laughs> out again. <laughs> so I, I heard the word delightful, and I went, "Wait!" You um, went the 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 brakes screeched shut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning this car around, kids. <laughs> before we get to M's lovely story, okay. I'm sure I'm already. I meant to text you this morning, M, and I. I texted you about something else, and then I figured you might be sleeping, and so I forgot to text you. So I was sleeping. Okay. Well, so I, I, I'm going to bring down the mood. I'm sorry, real quick, but also bring up the mood. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll even out. But I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who reached out after I made a very uh, dramatic slash vulnerable post on Instagram mm. and made a YouTube video. And I know, I, I don't know. I guess I assume everyone sees our Instagram, but I'm sure like, only a small percentage of people do um, I guess or so, follow yeah. my YouTube channel. But for everybody um, who's like, what's going on? Um, I made a video for YouTube. Um, I, okay, I should I just say, I guess I should just say it, huh? Yeah, just say it. I'm not good at being. I mean, it's literally your life. So oh, I'm not God. actually going to tell you what to do. You do whatever you want. I'm just going <sighs> to take longer. You're not going to tell me what to, since when? <laughs> I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna tell you what to do about this. That's for damn sure. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, I asked Em to tell me what to do all the time, and Em's like, "No, I'm not on this one. Don't put <laughs> me in charge, this, please." This one's on you. This I'm one's not- on me. <laughs> um, so don't worry, everybody. Everything's fine. But I, I had okay. So last year, I had three miscarriages consecutively. I had to write this down, Em, because I got too nervous to like wing it. Um, you wrote a speech. I wrote a speech. <laughs> Sit down. Stop interrupting my speech. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. My bad. My bad. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, it was a very tough year for everybody. I, this is not part of my speech. Now I'm nervous. Everyone thinks I'm like reading. Just read. Just read. Just read the paper okay, fine, in front fine, of fine. you. <laughs> to whom it may concern. Okay. Watching other people's videos was very helpful for me last year because I had I went through kind of a tough time where I only you know was able to connect with like friends and family. And so I was watching a lot of other people's YouTube videos about their own experiences with miscarriages and infertility, et cetera. And it made me feel a lot better and less alone. And so I thought, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything anywhere on the podcast or online. But then I was like, you know what? If this just helps like one person, um, I'm going to just put it out Go there. Go for it. Yeah. yeah. So I did. And I made a video about like what happened and like how I got through it and the quote unquote tips that helped me like, I don't know, deal like with it. Like, oh, God. Well, you have to watch the video. Wink. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Emma's going to steal it from the grocery store and not pay for it and ask me for the direct information. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> I guess the spark notes. I already forget. I'm so nervous. Uh, the spark notes was like uh, – journaling and um doing nothing that would really help me and it's hard for me to do like I mean it's not hard for me to do nothing like lay in bed but it's hard for me to do nothing like just lay there or you know just watch Netflix so that was really helpful um anyway I just like I posted that and I didn't know how it was gonna go and I wasn't sure like what people how people would react but everybody was it was like the most mind-blowing like I went to a doctor's appointment, I got out and it was like, you have 3000 comments. And I was like, holy crap. And it was just the most like people were DMing me and saying like, hey, I, I some people literally said like, I had three miscarriages this year too. Like, I mean, it was just really crazy how many people were like, I haven't told anyone. And, you know, I so I connected with a lot of people. I was very thankful. And I just, it made me very humbled and very just like, holy crap. Sometimes it gets lost on me, like how awesome our little community is and I think it's kind of bananas how um how common it is but yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to talk about it so and that's the other thing is like I talked about how everyone I knew not everyone I knew but a lot of people were like oh it's so common it's so common but that doesn't make it like any easier or like less scary or tough and so I think it gets lost in the like oh it's really normal but also nobody talks about it so it's like that weird right. gray area of like well now what so Anyway, I'm just so thankful for all of you, and I love you all so much, and I am just, I don't know. I, I went to the new year th- feeling like, okay, at least we have all these awesome people that listen to us and support us, and I'm just so thankful. Well, also, yeah, well, I was I was going to say, because I, I think it's, like, wild how common it, it is, but everyone's kind of afraid to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I think you probably did m- more of a, a good than I think you realize, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, especially last year who I get to finally say last year but all the people <laughs> who like were home alone and dealing with that yeah. like I think you talking about it probably made a lot of people feel more comfortable well in their I, own struggles so. I hope so and I appreciate that because I, I I mean full disclosure it was like really helpful for me personally like cathartic and I am from a German family we don't really talk about things emotionally speaking and so I was like very surprised how many people yeah, wrote to me and like how much of an impact it had on me personally. And so, yeah, sometimes, yeah. So I'm glad it went both ways. And um, anyway, I love you, Em. I'm just feeling very like grateful for everybody, <laughs> including you. And I did I did nothing. What are you, you talking did. about? You did. You are very You're supportive welcome. and kind. And I'm just thankful for everybody. So I just made you eat food with me. That was it. <laughs> Do you know how many people would pay for that privilege, Em? And I get it for free. I just remember, I guess that's true. I don't know. I, re- I just remember you telling me at least, you know, the first time I was like, okay, let's go eat. <laughs> so I don't know how else to help you. You literally were like, do you want pizza? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you said, I watched the Duggars. Don't worry. I can handle this. And I was like, okay. I, I literally, the, uh, Your the point only, of reference was <laughs> the only point of reference I had, which I will say in case people are upset with that comment at all, but like I did preface it with, I'm so sorry, but this is the only information I can give you. <laughs> But I wouldn't have accepted I, anything less from you because I, I my Christian stories, the Duggars and the Bates, and they have a lot of babies. I was like, I've heard some things about miscarriages. And I was like, this is the only information I can provide. <laughs> if it's not useful, I'm an asshole. But no, if it is helpful, not. then let's go get asshole. food. And then let's get food. I mean, really, it was the, uh, it was everything I needed. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway I know I, I know that was an awkward thing to just force into the beginning, but I just just it'd been way more everybody. awkward to force at the end that's so. very true or in the middle that would have been fun 
that would have been <laughs> like an intermission or like, like a commercial break. <laughs> hang on. I know you just talked about another mongoose in the walls, but I have something to say. <laughs> like, hmm, speaking of oddities. Hmm, um, okay. Well, anyway, you're. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes, I am feeling a lot better. Yes. And I feel very connected to everybody. And if you do want to see that video, because um, it, I just was also amazed. It's like the, my most watched video on my YouTube channel now, which... <laughs> is interesting um but yeah i mean i guess we can just link it in the youtube our youtube or something i don't know let's try again so there was something delightful i want to talk about um <laughs> oh it was there weird <laughs> no, no no there was a it's actually not i guess the delightful is not necessarily the right word but i i was trying to find a parallel between this story and new year's and prediction is definitely oh uh, a, a word you would find in both of, of those topics so uh, this is definitely different. Hang on, let me close my bathroom door. I oh feel like God. there's an I have echo. some guesses. I you're not gonna get it. No. What is it? Nostradamus. No, oh. but that's a that's a great one. I would. I, lo- I just it occurred it occurred to me that would be a fun topic someday. Eva, Crystal write that balls. down. Nostradamus. Um, Nostradamus, and don't even look up how to spell it. I want you to guess. <laughs> This year, M um, 2021, it's time to focus on uh, finally taking care of ourselves, wouldn't you say? Finally. I'd say finally. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one thing that Em and I both do. We're very different people, but there is one thing that we both do that I think makes both of us feel very good about ourselves, and that is Daily Harvest. It's one of the few things we have exactly in common. <laughs> uh, Daily Harvest delivers delicious food all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door, and it takes literally minutes to prepare, and I've never had to think twice about the food that I'm eating. I know that it's good for me, and I also know that RJ approves, so I know that I'm good on that front. I know Blaze approves on your end so we both have uh healthy people letting us know no no you're doing the right thing that's right our better halves uh have endorsed <laughs> this product uh and we both have a daily harvest sharpie to sharpie our uh mint cacao uh breakfast <laughs> true. so we do actually have more in common than we thought uh daily harvest is committed to minimizing their environmental impact and they're in the process of transitioning to be 100 compostable recyclable plant-based and renewable fiber packaging so you can feel good about ordering from them I mean, we've talked about their smoothies before, which are amazing. We've talked about their flatbreads before, which are somehow more amazing to me. <laughs> I I think they're definitely my favorites, but they also have uh, for lunch or dinner, they have their, like I said, their flatbreads and for food. Uh, oh, and food that's perfect for the colder winter, uh, even though it's not necessarily cold out, out here, but I'm going to pretend it is so I can have their harvest bowls and their soups, <laughs> um, whatever it takes, just so I can feel like I'm still in that nature cozy vibe. Uh, but Daily Harvest has it for me. With Daily Harvest, we're enjoying undeniably delicious clean food without any of the prep. And whether you're looking to have your daily dose of fruits and veggies or just want to have a little more time back on your hands, you can too. Get started today by going to dailyharvest.com and entering promo code DRINK to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code DRINK for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com, dailyharvest.com. I wish smell vision worked because I am currently wearing my cucumber mint uh, deodorant from Native and I smell lovely. I like how you think if smell vision existed, I would tune into your channel at all times. And to smell my armpits? It, it would be primetime <laughs> Christine armpit hour. And uh, But you know what? I would tune in every now and then. I would at least record you for later. Okay, at least uh, the peppermint one because that's actually my new favorite. Okay, but you would have to tune in for my my regular uh, coconut vanilla okay, hour. Fair. I mean, we actually, you know, deal. this sounds like not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know what chaos we're talking about, uh, welcome to our armpits and to Native Deodorant. Native Deodorant is formulated without aluminum, parabens, or talc. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. And Native Deodorant is made with ingredients that you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter, all these wonderfully nice smelling things. And uh, if you wear it every day, you will be able to smell like us. You will. And isn't that all you've ever wanted? (laughs) Also, it works because as we've discussed many a time, I'm a very sweaty individual. And uh, it is really incredible because I've tried a bajillion other deodorants. And this one actually works and feels good and is like healthy. And I'm like, listen, it's I'm not going to question it too much because it's my it's it's my new my armpits new favorite. 
It's nice to walk past Christine and want to do a deep inhale and just be like, <laughs> <For> once. <laughs> be like, ooh, what's going on here? There are over 10 scents, including their classics and rotating seasonals, and you're guaranteed to find one you love. Their classic scents are coconut and vanilla, which is the most popular and also my favorite. Um, there's lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, citrus and herbal musk. I mean, they've got a, something for everyone. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedo.com slash drink or use promo code drink at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash drink or use promo code drink at checkout for 20% off your first order. Well, so this is, uh, I want to apologize because going into the year, like I, you would think that I'm going to like stick with a real, our, well, like apparently, our I just theme. looked at our calendar. We already released an episode on January 3rd. So, uh, apparently this is our second episode anyway. So you're clear. You're good. Hey, guess what? Go for it. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so, okay, well, to us, this is the first episode of the year because we're true. literally That's recording true. in January. You're but right. um, so I want to half apologize just because this isn't a paranormal story. This isn't supernatural. This is just weird. If I had to put it in any category, it's just weird. I love weird. Um, and uh so there's no, I just, if you were looking for spooky, I don't know if this would really fall into that category, but I have one to cover it and a few people have requested it. So I kind of just took that as, okay, what well, is it? this is, it's not even a story. This is just a list. Um, <laughs> I love a list. Come on. Uh, the, all the, the times that the Simpsons got the <gasps> future, right? Cool. And this <laughs> is cool and spooky. I it's, if you don't know about it, it's, it's, just that the the TV show The Simpsons have oddly guessed many things Oh, this is accurately. so fun. Um, so I hope that it's... I'm sorry it's not ghosty or anything. No, but, but it, is cr- it is creepy, I feel like. It's still it's what the fuck? sort of like fuck? Mandela effect-y, like, you know? It's still definitely weird. It's definitely, like, odd. It's like, Mysterious. How getting- uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this is uh, me talking about The Simpsons. I assume Eva knows this, right? Because Eva yeah. knows yes. watches The Simpsons. Okay. Uh, no, I actually, I think I told Eva about this one a while ago, and I, there's just a, there's a lot. It's really weird that how many things. It's just it's it took a while because I was also doing like a, additional research right before we recorded uh, last night, so it's just uh, a lot. Woo-hoo. Can so, I make a note about The Simpsons real quick? When yeah. I was little, my school had a, an actual like assembly telling us not to watch The Simpsons. Why? Because they said it was like immoral. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, Catholic school was – my parents are like, wait, we paid for what? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we had a whole assembly about – and I remember my friend Alyssa, who will never admit to this, but she was like head of the committee where they had to like make a PowerPoint presentation of how terrible The Simpsons was for your <laughs> – like christian brain Calling and at that moment i literally out. was like i remember that moment being like that's my new favorite show and uh <laughs> from then on it changed my life speaking of lists can we what i think it'd be a shorter list if catholic schools told you what you can watch just yeah that's, so true. We're clear. that's true probably, probably not the, even the duggars probably i was like, gonna say <laughs> so many so few things um well certainly not the simpsons so if you were raised catholic Oh, Veggie Tales. Okay, I gotta be honest though, I did love the Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales was a good VHS. Yeah, I gotta say, I did tell you I'm easy to trick. So in terms of like <laughs> luring me in as a child, I had no idea it was even religious until it was too late. <laughs> I was just like, these songs kind of slap, and now <laughs> I mean they do. They still. And then do. I was like, why do I want to pray all of a sudden? What's <laughs> happening? Who's Isaiah? What's going on? <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we'll do Veggie Tales and all of their craziness next week. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I could do like a that very- would be fun. I was going to say, if I did a story that was kind of like The Grinch and how we sold Christmas. Oh my God. But I just covered the Veggie Tales. I feel like it could get weird. I feel like there's like a parting of the Red Sea with like a green bean. I don't know. You could probably come up with all sorts of stuff. There's definitely something about that. I All I know is that the little asparagus was my best friend. Oh, I up. love him. Yeah, I thought he was so cool. Here we are, The Simpsons. <laughs> different, different anthropomorphic things. This was my um, vice as a five-year-old, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't really know how to start this one because it's not really a story. So I'm just going to just dive right into yeah, the notes. Yeah, go for it. The Simpsons were created by Matt Groening. Um, and it was first a, I'm just trying to throw in some fun facts while I was at it. It was first debuted on the Tracy Ullman show in 1987 as a short before it got its own series. Um, and then 
two years later, uh, December 17th, 89, uh, the first episode came out on Fox, and ever since then, it has been the longest-running scripted primetime series to ever air in the country. Wow. So they're coming up right now on their 700th episode. Oh, my God. Which, like, we're almost halfway there. Whatever. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Get with it, Simpsons. Um, so I really just go straight into this. I tried to break these predictions down into different categories just so they were easier to kind of swallow, because um, there is a lot of them, and very easy to get overwhelmed, uh, as you'll see, because it certainly happened to me. So, oh, sorry, I didn't want to, Mooney is in my grill. Look at that little curly Sue tail. There's his butt. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, this is so sweet. Wait, can we get a close up face he to keeps, face? Um, yeah. Come here, sweetie pie. Let me see that Come sweet here. little face. Say hi to Funkle in. Oh, say hi to Funk. Okay. <gasps> oh, he's mad at me. Happy paws. Okay. Oh. He'll be back on his own terms. He's so slinky. Yeah, he's already gotten so big. I'm sad. I want him to be a kitten forever. He's fine. He's fine. He- it's Funkle M's fault. Yeah, we'll blame it on me. He doesn't even know who I am yet. Nothing. Okay. It's ever Funkle M's fault. <laughs> uncle M's the fun uncle. Talk to Gio. Listen, he'll tell you. <laughs> he'll, he'll show you what's what. And rule number one is I'm always right and I'm always fun. <laughs> Christine, this year, my resolution, or at least one of my many resolutions, is to uh, get my get my skin goals uh, on the up and up, if you Hashtag will. Hashtag skin goals. Hashtag, <laughs> yes, skin goals. I was going to try to make it funnier, but I would have absolutely done the opposite. Thanks. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, and if you are like me, if you're trying to either take care of acne or if you're trying to take care of fine lines or dark spots, luckily there is Curology. Oh, thank goodness. I have dealt with, um, I thought acne was kind of in my past after high school, but for whatever reason, I guess my hormones <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> decided that they had other plans. Uh-huh. Um, and so thankfully, Curology has been able to help. So basically what they do is they match you with a licensed dermatology provider who gets to know your skin specifically. And I was like, help! And then uh, <laughs> if it's a good fit they customize a prescription cream to address whether it's your acne your fine lines dark spots all of the above just saying uh and then they set it a personalized treatment plan they send it right to your door and you never have to worry about it again you've got your plan and you're good to go i i know that when uh i got my curology my little kit if you will they there was three different uh bottles that i got and what was super nice about them is as someone who doesn't often use a lot of product and I don't know like when I'm supposed to do it or how mm-hmm. I'm supposed to do it. All the instructions are even on the bottle. So if you it's are so easy, yeah, if you're someone who gets as easily confused as me, you can't <laughs> with Curology. That's the fun of it. <laughs> and it works. That's the most amazing and part. It works. <laughs> Take control of acne, dark spots, breakouts, or whatever your unique concerns may be with a powerful skin par- skin care treatment made just for you today. Go to Curology.com slash drink for a free 30-day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash drink to unlock your free 30-day trial. See Curology.com for all the details. Christine. Uh Uh-huh. So, uh, new year, new me. Um... (laughs) Uh, and by that, I mean, new year, new awareness of my mental health. Oh, how fun. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, was already a little aware. Now I'm really going to like go full force. It's and called self-care. Okay. Her- ever heard of it? It's called self-care and we're going to do it 365 days this year. Uh, and thankfully I have better help to help me along the way. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, we've all been there. Maybe some of us are there. No comment. Uh, BetterHelp (laughs) will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist who you can start communicating with in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's actual professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, um, which may not be locally available in many areas. So no matter where you are, especially during this pandemic uh, and still staying home, you can still have access to this. You don't have to be in a certain area. And the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room like with traditional therapy. So. Oh, gosh, that's the best part, I think. And it's affordable. So, I mean, it really is a win, 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 win. <laughs> Visit BetterHelp.com slash drink, and that's better, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million, and now 1 million and 2, I guess, uh, people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're actually recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. That's a special offer for And That's Why We Drink listeners, where you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash drink. <laughs> 
I yeah, I tried to break down these predictions just because it does get really I mean, it's kind of bananas. Um, and for those of you who didn't know, like I, I kind of very quickly touched on it um, a couple minutes ago. But in case you were unaware, The Simpsons, because it's been around for so long, um, they've done a lot of episodes where it's either about the future or even in in their own like present day episodes. They'll just kind of briefly touch on something. And then oddly enough, it's almost like they manifest these things and they mm. actually become true. And it's weird how many events have happened after an episode aired. Um, so that is the the real theme here today. So it started pretty quickly. The show, the show first aired December 89. And in 1990, these predictions started oh, wow. showing up. So uh, the first one, I tried to do it in chronological order by the episode air date, um, just to give it some cool. understanding or some ease. Um, but so the first episode to come out, that had a prediction was in 1990. It was season two, episode four. And uh, so Bart catches a three eyed fish named Blinky near the power plant. um, And it ends up making local headlines. And basically his mom ends up accidentally serving it to uh, Mr. Burns. (laughs) And in 2011, so this was what I, why can I not do math all of a sudden 21 years later? Yes. Uh, a three-eyed fish was actually found in Argentina next to a power plant. And uh, a lot of people started writing in their reports that nobody accidentally ate him, luckily, because that's <laughs> what would have happened on The Simpsons. <laughs> so it's just little stupid things like that where it's like, okay, so that's weird. That's like... Yeah, all, where you like, can oh, watch the show and be like, oh, no, that actually happened. Where it's like, Really? Also, because it was the first time, it's like, okay, so 20 years later, something like that happened. What a coincidence. But then as this starts happening, if I were, I mean, I'm not like the world's biggest Simpsons fan. That's just like not my jam. But like, if I were, every episode I would be on edge at this point. Yeah, true. If I were a writer, I'd be like, okay, we're only writing really (laughs) calm, pause, no, don't don't touch anything. Exactly. Just (laughs) we're going to walk into the writing room. We're going to not touch anything. Look around. So so that was the first thing. The next time happened in 1993 in season five. um, And I guess the Simpsons have their own version of Siegfried and Royd called Mm. Gunter and Ernst. (laughs) And... uh, you, do you know who Siegfried and Roy is? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Siegfried and Roy, for those of you who don't know, they were a magician duo, and uh, they often performed in Vegas. They had tigers. That was, like, their big thing. They would perform with tigers on stage that they had trained. Apparently, they were, like, their real-life domestic pets that they had taught the show performance to. Um, but so on The Simpsons, the, the parody version of Siegfried and Roy – uh, in this episode, the tiger actually attacks them during oh. a live performance. Um, 10 years later, this actually really happened where one of their tigers attacked them during a live performance. Oh. Um, uh, so I don't know if you remember that, but for me, it was, I remember that being like on yep. all the tabloids and grocery stores and stuff. And I remember there being this huge argument about whether or not it was uh we should be worried about the tiger like did he did the tiger just snap and right just right become a tiger and just attack a human being or uh, a lot of people said that the tiger actually sensed a stroke in roy and so what? he was like trying to protect his owner by but he him. ended up protecting him by severely injuring him i don't really understand but there was a huge controversy i remember of people being like no 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 the tiger was right <laughs> <laughs> okay to be fair like don't fucking keep a tiger has tiger king caught you exactly nothing, taught you nothing right exactly so it, yeah i mean it's I a tiger no matter, like hello it's going to bite you sorry no matter what the tiger wasn't wrong let's right like, right <laughs> it was a tiger the tiger doesn't have a moral compass it's like a literal tiger it was like i smell fresh meat here yeah. i go uh but so but so anyway they ended up predicting that the tiger would attack and then it did attack exactly the same way during a live performance in vegas both in the show and in real time um the next one was in 1994 so only a year later and in the actual the same season um it was still season five uh and on the simpsons lunch lady doris used assorted horse parts to make lunch for students at school god 
And then uh, in 2013, uh, foods being advertised in Europe as containing beef had actually been declared as having horse meat. (gasps) So they had, uh, I remember that being a big thing where even that rumor started to trickle over Mm -hmm. here. Like, especially in Taco Bell, they were like, oh, Taco Bell is horse meat. Taco Bell is horse meat. Yeah. Which, by the way, Taco Bell was one of the companies where they identified horse meat in their beef product. Oh, no. Um, Either they, it was undeclared horse meat or it was improperly declared horse meat and kind of like improperly declared you have to declare it properly if you're going to put horse meat in your food it was like a like a beef byproduct basically uh but so all of us so they predicted that there'd be a horse meat scandal and then it's now literally called the horse meat scandal in real life (laughs) um also uh in that same year uh they showed nasa sending a random person into space on the simpsons this was in 1994 they did an episode where they just shot a random (laughs) non-astronaut into space and in 2013 uh the uk sent a non-astronaut named oliver knight into space (laughs) why i don't know i have that sounds like its own story where it's like right can we interview that guy like what was it like not understanding the controls of the rocket and just yeah being stuck. Are you actually like, can we interview you? Because are you like on Earth or are you like dead in the sky? <laughs> All like, overnight. Are you Did here? you ever make it back? Are you okay? Are you okay? Is can you this imagine broadcast that? reaching you like 200 years later up in the stratosphere somewhere? In 2013, Oliver Knight went to space, came back 2021, and was like, what happened? Like, He's like, what? wait, no, 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 I'm turning the ship around. Get back on the rocket. I want to go back up. I want to <laughs> yeah, go back up Take me way. back. <laughs> Uh, also in 1995 in season six, uh, this one was actually a, a big episode in terms of predictions, but we'll we'll get to some of them later. So, But the main one is that <clears throat> Lisa goes to London and you can see in the skyline behind Big Ben, uh, there's a skyscraper that looks a lot like what is now called the Shard, uh-huh. um, which is a, another big building in London, or I think in London. Uh but that building didn't exist at the time. What? It was just a random building that they drew in. But now it's eerily identical <gasps> to the King. actual shard that ended up getting built 14 years later. Okay, that's creepy, especially because that's not even the writers. That's the animators, like, just throwing their hat in the ring here. And they start, I mean, it just becomes such a normal thing where you're like, oh, what's that thing? And then 15 years later, it exists, which that's is super creepy. creepy. Um, also, in this episode, they predicted Skype. And they predicted uh, they had like if they had a whole episode about video conferencing, even though this was in 1995 and Skype didn't become a thing until 2003. Wow. Um, In 1997, uh, in season 10, there was a sign in one of the uh, clips and it all these things are kind of background things. So you'll pay attention to like the smallest detail. It's almost like they're slipping them in, manifesting them. (sighs) So in season 10, there was a clip uh, where there's a sign that says, 20th Century Fox as the logo. And then underneath it, it says a division of Walt Disney Company. And then 20 years later, Disney actually did buy Fox. Stop. What? But like, why would you even write that? I don't know. I don't know. It's just such a weird thing. Like, oh, ha ha ha. Why would these companies have anything to do with each other? Oh, sure. I guess. Yeah. It's like just a satirical thing. Yeah. How weird. Yeah. 20 years later, Disney actually did buy Fox. Um, also in 1997, Marge is reading a book to Bart about the Ebola virus. And in 2014, Ebola broke out again. Oh, God. Do, do you remember when Ebola broke yes, out? Yes, I totally do. That was do. bananas. Also, like, eerily kind of like the pandemic now where, like, people were in hazmat suits. Terrified. And, like, terrified yeah. of touching each other. I wish people were more terrified of touching each other now. But I guess I the wish Ebola people- virus needs to come back for that to happen. I wish people treated this like the fucking Ebola virus. Yeah, <laughs> like, really. I mean... <laughs> Uh, also in 2007, The Simpsons predict the NSA spying scandal Oh, um, with Ooh. Snowden and the NSA finding, like, knowing every single thing you ever post or anything you upload or any picture you take, they, they can see it. Uh, 2007, they predicted it. In 2013, it happened. <sighs> um, another one is in 2013. Uh, there was a clip in a Simpsons episode uh where Homer is on the news and underneath him, there's like a news, like a breaking news headline that says Europe puts Greece on eBay. And it is implying that there's like a huge financial crash. <laughs> yeah. And then two years later, there was a massive Greek financial crash. Ah! Uh, fun fact that 
uh, Easter egg, I guess is what we're calling this. I don't know. It's yeah, that I prediction. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, was found by a Reddit user named My Penis Batman. So. Oh, shit. That. Sorry. I thought I changed my username before I posted <laughs> that. I was trying to be more professional, but. Uh, okay. So here are just some sports ones that I think are kind of cool. I tried okay. to. Oh, and think sports are cool. Finally. I'm listening. Finally. All it took was the Simpsons. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> just some sports predictions. In 1992, uh, there's an episode called Lisa the Greek and the Buffalo Bills lose the Super Bowl. Three days later, three days later, the Bills lost the Super Bowl. Uh Um, And then a year later, because they thought it was funny that they were able to predict the Super Bowl. So a year later for the next Super Bowl, (gasps) the Simpsons were like, oh, let's play that episode, Super Bowl Sunday, but let's re-record the lines. And like, oh, my God, let's like refresh the episode. And so they re-predicted who would win the Super Bowl and they were right. And then 1994, they did the exact same thing and they predicted it right again. So three years in a row, they played that on Super Bowl Sunday, and they were were That's, right. For all and then they were like, "We gotta quit while we're ahead because the second we <laughs> stop winning this, like it's over." That's smart. It's very smart. They were like, "Okay, this is too much. Next time, we're not gonna be right at all." Yep. Um, 2012, they uh, the Simpsons had in, in a Super Bowl episode, they had Lady Gaga performing in a silver outfit and hanging by wires and flying over the crowd and shut up, being very weirdly identical to. 2017 where lady gaga actually did perform in a How silver weird. outfit with wires i'd like to think lady gaga was like i have a fucking idea like why i mean totally roll the tape let's just freak people out and let's just do it pretty much exactly as the simpsons said i love that idea if that's the case uh in 2010 homer and marge they actually go to the olympics and they win uh the usa's first gold medal in curling um <laughs> and they they win against Sweden, and then uh, only eight years later, the U.S. won no a way. gold medal in curling against Sweden. That's wild. That's pretty weird. In 2014, they predicted the FIFA corruption scandal. Oh, my God. And a year later, it happened, uh, where FIFA officials, executives, associates, pretty much a little bit of everyone, they were all charged with either corruption, money laundering, racketeering, and or wire fraud. Um, some of them, I think, were suspected in getting, like, bribes up to like 150 million dollars oh, like dear. it was really fucking wild um but so they predicted that a year before it happened um and so i mean there's just little things like that and so over time uh a lot of simpsons fans have their own conspiracy theory that matt groening is a time traveler <gasps> And so this has given uh, me more goose cam than a lot of episodes. I don't know what you're talking about. This not being creepy. Well, uh, with just like with so many things happening one after the other. And I wish I I will put some pictures into we have pictures saved for if I mention it, we we have them in the in our YouTube version of this. If you're listening to the audio, it's on YouTube. But if you look at the pictures, some of them are really creepy. Like it's just like the Lady Gaga Super Bowl one. It's like. (sighs) It's too on the nose or like finding the shard behind Big Ben and then seeing the shard. I mean, it's just it's I think what's freaky is how subtle that is. Like Mm -hmm. it's so subtle that you wouldn't notice on first pass. But then like years later, you notice that's what freaks me out. Or like it could be an accident, like you're saying about like, oh, well, he was like, oh, no, there's I don't know. They just know there's a building there, but it's time travel. There's not yet. (laughs) Ah! Also, I wonder how many people are seeing what goes on in the world and then intentionally go back and watch the Simpsons trying to find clues that it, yeah, that's that, true. Like, oh, we tried to warn you. Cause I, I think that's what happened with the Greek financial crisis. And then he was, this guy happened to be watching the new or the, the Simpsons episode where he was on the news and saw right. a little blip about it, but it's also like so tiny. You wouldn't pay attention until there's an event to compare it. Yeah, to. that's true. So, Anyway, because a lot of people think that he's a time traveler, they a lot of people also think that the biggest clue, arguably, that he's a time traveler is that after The Simpsons, he went on to create the show Futurama. Right. And so I never like, even put that together until you just said it. It's just like rubbing it in your fucking face of like, yeah, I'm from the future. <laughs> or like, yeah, I know how to go to the future and get information and put it in The Simpsons. Freaky. Um. So there are... A lot of other predictions, this one category I'm about to do is that predictions that almost debunk 
this whole thing. Some people really are convinced that this man is a time traveler, by the way. Like, like I, I'm count me in on that list <laughs> at this point. Well, these are other things that pe- people have given the Simpsons credit for, um, but they've been able to be debunked. Okay. So um, that's what this whole little section is. In 1994, uh, there are two bullies that uh, take a memo to beat up Martin um, on their on their new tech device. Oh, no. But the memo, instead of saying beat up Martin when they write it in, it says eat up Martha. And so it's foreshadowing autocorrecting. Oh. <laughs> and so, like, it was a lot of people said, like, they predicted in 1994 autocorrect. But a lot of people forget the device that they were using in the show was a legitimate device at the time. And it was known to have bad hand oh, recognition. So it already had exi- autocorrect already existed in a way. Basically, yeah. It, it was before the iPhone. It was called the Newton. It was an Apple product. It was called the Newton. What? Is it, it was like a bas- Palm Pilot? I was going to say, it was basically a, a Palm Pilot or like the most, um, uh, the fanciest version of a Palm Pilot before the iPhone started getting pitched. So okay. it, I mean, it came with like a stylus and you would sure. write and then it would almost like take your handwriting and then generate it in actual text oh, and yeah, save I it to your note. I vaguely remember that. Okay. So they even say it in the show when they say, oh, take a memo to meet up, beat up Martin. They say, like, take a memo when you're Newton. But I think a lot of people don't know what a Newton is. And sure. so I think they just assumed that it was like a fake product or something. Right. OK. Um, but yeah, so actually Apple's former director, I think in like engineering or something, said that that episode was inspiration to make sure that they got the iphone keyboard right because they were oh my like God. they were like even in the 90s are already roasting us for like autocorrect and so well, we've maybe matt went this- back in time and was like we need to warn apple to fucking <laughs> fix this shit you know i like how he couldn't just walk into like a conference room and be like no. this doesn't fucking fly <laughs> he had to write it into his own show and hope someone noticed and also autocorrect not like the fall of civilization, but right. Like 2020, whatever (laughs) pandemic, it's fine. Autocorrect. No, 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 no. And in 2021, by the way, there's still autocorrect problems. So that's true. It hasn't really gotten that much better. His, his message to the world didn't totally translate, I guess. Almost like it was autocorrected. Um, but so like, but I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of people like to credit the Simpsons for predicting autocorrect, but it already existed. Um, at least on that, with that one product. It did. Right. Um, also in 1995, I mentioned a little bit earlier that Lisa and that one episode about Lisa, they predicted uh, video conferencing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also predicted smartwatches in that episode and they predicted robot librarians, which is basically like a digital computer library source. Sure. All of which currently exist. JSTOR. <laughs> JSTOR. <laughs> but the, one could argue that those things have been talked about forever. I mean, even in like, true. James, like James Bond, like, I mean, his watch, his smart watch where he could talk into it. I mean, and that any like sci-fi existed. with like video call, like calling right. and stuff. Hologram, yeah. like Star Wars, sure. the hologram. I mean, you can argue that that has always been a concept and they didn't yeah. really predict it. Makes um, sense. Here's a creepy one though. Uh, in 1997, uh, there was an episode where there was a framed brochure uh, that it was about New York and it was basically like a pamphlet on like how to be a tourist in New York on the cheap. And so I think the brochure itself said like New York at $9 a day and behind it, because Uh-oh. they wanted a picture of New Uh-oh. York that everyone would recognize. They had the twin towers on the back of the brochure or on behind the, the text on the brochure so you see New York and then you see nine and then behind it are two towers that look like 11 and it looks like 911. What? Really, the the brochure itself looks like it's saying 911 with the twin towers as part of the image. Is that one of the photos you're putting in? Yeah. Can I um, look it up real quick? I'm just yeah. curious. 911. I'm trying to picture it. 911 Simpsons. Oh, I see what you're saying with the not the $9. Oh my mm-hmm. god, that is very creepy. It's it's just one of those things where like you really wouldn't notice until nine eleven fucking happened, and then yeah. you're like, oh, that's odd. But there's like nothing else on it except for a nine, and then the two towers. Like it's not like the whole skyline. It's like just it just says New York nine eleven basically. Yeah, and it's the twin towers. <laughs> it's very odd. Ew. And so and that was in 1997. Okay. Um, yes. And the writers have commented on that, like 
yeah, that one's weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like we can't been, explain this one away. <laughs> just so you, like the, the Simpsons staff are very aware that people think they're time travelers at this point. And so when it came to the 9-11 one, they were like, okay, we hear you. And also yeah. that is weird. <laughs> like we're, we're on it. <sighs> um, also in the year 2000 in an episode from season 11, uh, they predicted Trump being president. Where this Lisa, is the one I've heard about, not like the only one I've heard about. Lisa was president in the future is the the whole concept of this episode, and she's struggling with a budget crisis because of President Trump. Shut up! Can you what? what uh, there, the a motorcycle I thought you was going to crash me. into the, my <laughs> fucking bedroom. Um. I literally <laughs> thought there was a ghost. You're not even telling a ghost story. And I just assumed you saw a ghost. It's the ghost of President Trump. I mean. Um, but no, so she's struggling with a budget crisis due to President Trump. Th- I mean, that's pretty weird. It's very weird. And also, like, if you've seen that clip where, like, Trump is on the elevator waving in The Simpsons. Have yeah. you seen this? Uh, if- probably, but I can't remember it. It's literally frame for frame this like it's like it's since you're googling things yeah yeah google trump uh simpsons trump on elevator oh (gasps) it's like it's weird it's the exact same image cam again it's the my god it's very weird it's very i mean and granted it's just a guy on an elevator at some point you were going to get a picture of him on an elevator i guess or on an escalator sorry um but uh It's just weird that he's like waving the same motions are happening. I mean, it's 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 really creepy. Unless someone on Trump's team is like a Simpsons writer and they were like, hey, this would be funny. Just like wave when you're going down the escalator. Oh, right. Uh, somehow I doubt that the, they're that connected to pop culture, right. but maybe. One likes to imagine. And also. Uh, oh, apparently only- also. Oh, sorry. You were about to. Probably no, no, no. Say go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. About the sign. Apparently no. somebody in the background dropped a sign, like a supporter dropped a sign in the oh, show. Oh, really? And it like happened in real life too. Get out of here. I mean, it's just weird. It's just creepy. Um, <sighs> also in that same episode, a lot of people have said that the Simpsons manifested Greta Thunberg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least they can do like some good things. Jeez. Some good. Because Greta and Lisa are both passionate about the environment. and uh, Oh, interesting. So anyway, so a lot of people have also said that there's that commonality. So extra creepy. Um, In 1990, there was an episode about the censorship of Michelangelo's David, uh, the statue of David, the naked man. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I'll keep describing him. I love it. The the one with the penis that when you stand next to it is gargantuan. My Um, penis Batman. Yeah. (laughs) I recall. That's actually Michelangelo's Reddit user handle, so (laughs) would you mind? Um, So in 1990, there was an episode about censoring David. Um, And this actually was a real censorship campaign in 2016. Apparently someone in Russia ended up creating this huge campaign about trying to put a fig leaf over his situation. His wang. (laughs) And... uh, but a lot of people also say, okay, the Simpsons didn't predict that because that wasn't like the first campaign to sure. cover him up. I guess ever since he was created, there have been like really like either uh, either royalty or rich executives or whoever they are. People have complained ever since he was created that they needed to cover him up. Love a good rich executive who's like, I know what I need to spend my money on. I love a good rich executive, especially the one Period. who's like, I don't like the naked statue next to me. I know I came in here to look at art, but this one shocked me. I actually feel threatened personally. Uh, right. And right. it has nothing to do with my own wang, but I'm <laughs> very threatened. I'm not self-conscious. No. Okay. No. I'm not insecure. I just don't like seeing other naked people. No, 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 no. Uh, and then an- another uh, prediction that, they got credit for, but probably shouldn't have, is that in 2010, Millhouse predicts that Bengt R. Holmstrom wins the Nobel Prize in economics, which he did six years later. So a lot lot of people think that, you know, that's odd. But my understanding or my argument would be, I have a hunch that this Holmstrom guy was doing something pretty spectacular for years before he got a Nobel Prize. So it wouldn't be hard to... This Holstrom guy was doing a little something spectacular. That's right. I have a feeling that this guy's up to something. He didn't just Uh show up in 2016 and blow us all away. So 
Uh, <laughs> unless maybe he did, and I'm a real I mean, asshole. Who knows? But I'm with you on this one. If this man did not exist, and then in 2016 he okay, won a yeah, Nobel that's Prize, even weirder. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, Matt Groening, you're right. Um, <laughs> but until then, I think the argument could be said that like he was probably you don't just win a Nobel Prize. He was like slated for it. <laughs> he was probably on his way. Yeah. So anyway, those are just some of the ones where people like to give the Simpsons credit. Um, oh, and with the the Trump one, I never gave an explanation to that. So um, people like to say that the Simpsons predicted that Trump would be president, but Trump has been flirting with the idea of becoming president since the eighties. And he even on Larry King in the nineties said that he already had a committee oh, God, looking into right. it. So, so it's, and you know, Trump flirting is not cute. So not cute. No. Is it even flirting or is it just being direct and aggressive? It's I, that, correct. It's that. It's saying, I have an idea as a rich executive. I'm threatened by this big wang. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I've never seen Trump and a naked David statue in the same room. I'm just going to say. That's because it's never been on The Simpsons. The second that episode airs, we know it's going to, it's coming. And he was Shield probably, he was probably the rich executive who just wanted a fig leaf oh, over certainly. that man's crotch. Yes. So here are two of the bigger theories that people really defend saying no no Mac Roney is a time traveler like without question this man is a time traveler um there's two major uh pieces of evidence I suppose the first one is in 2008 there was an episode where Homer is trying to vote for Obama in the U.S. general election but it is a faulty machine and it keeps changing his vote oh yeah um so every time Homer tries to vote for Obama uh the machine switches it to John McCain and four years later in 2012 there was the huge scandal of voting machines uh registering you incorrectly right um i guess in pennsylvania it started it was the first machine to do this and every time people voted for obama it would uh change it to mitt romney poor pennsylvania they can't get a fucking break over there (laughs) apparently there's a video of this too if you'd like to see it it is a youtube video called in all caps vote incorrectly registered 2012 presidential election or like vote incorrectly registered yeah oh okay <laughs> did i say it weird Sorry. i know i just i was trying to to picture the words in my head i got it vote incorrectly registered 2012 presidential election in all caps got it in all caps um so a lot of people say that like i guess some people think that before 2008 this wasn't like a a real issue or like it wasn't uh even a discussion. It wasn't up for debate that this could possibly happen. Sure. And so the fact that uh, on the show it happened and then four years later it became like one of the biggest scandals during an election, people think, okay, well, the Simpsons are up to something. The next one, which I think is, I would, if I had to pick an argument, I would pick this one, is that in 1998, there's an episode where Homer is uh, is an inventor and a mathematician and he's standing in front of a uh, blackboard with an equation on it and that equation, like 15 years later, ended up being the correct mass of the Higgs boson particle, the God particle. What? So uh, well, they just like made that up and it was like, oh, that this is, so oh I, my God. And for those of you who don't know, the, the God particle is basically like the formula for like the existence of of the universe or something like it's matter like, or something. I mean, I'm sure I'm not saying that right. But. It's, it's pretty bananas, but I remember growing up in science class hearing like all about the Higgs boson particle. And we're so close to figuring it out. Yeah, it was we're like so a big close. deal. Um, and then uh, like 14 or 15 like years the, later, the Simpson particle or the something. Homer, like the Homer it, particle, the Homer, they did it first. <laughs> so a lot of people blindly go in and say, Oh, they just like guessed a fucking equation. Apparently there are people who say that equation was for a long time. It was like the guess. It was the best oh. prediction they had. And then later, you know, down the road, they ended up finding out that they could confirm that that was the right. equation. Okay. Okay. So it was like it's a not, theory or something. It was a theory. And uh-huh. a, so a lot of people try to use that argument for like Mac Roning as a time traveler, but apparently a lot of the writing staff on the Simpsons is, are like, went to Harvard for math. Like they literally went to Harvard for math. Okay. So I think one of the um, big excuses for where all of these random Easter eggs come from, especially uh, when it comes to math, there's a surprisingly large amount of math Easter eggs in the Simpsons. And they all come from the fact that a lot of the writing staff have math degrees. That's weird. Okay. Interesting. So 
they think they it's one of them probably just asked for the animators to put that into the on the blackboard that the Higgs boson particle equation would be up on the board and it ended up being correct later. Um, so like I said, a lot of people think that because uh, the write, the writing staff are academics, that would explain why a lot of things end up happening later because they're able to critically think sure. uh, about the plausibilities in the future. Um, there are two writers, especially named Mike Reese and Al Jean. Al Jean, I think, is like one of the original, original, original writers from mm-hmm. the first episode. And... Uh, He has confirmed that if you look hard enough, there are a lot of mathematical Easter eggs. Um, And some believe that the predictions within The Simpsons is a testament to just the fact that they all have educational backgrounds. They're not just comedy writers. But other people, other people also think that, um, that they're not using their education to write things in that statistically could happen. They think it's actually the reverse now where, instead of predicting things, they're manifesting things. Oh, okay. Which is interesting. Cause I, I do think to some degree that's right. Where, uh, like they're basically putting things in and because now they have this fandom of people looking for it, people sure. end up finding it purely because they're looking for it. So, um, one example they made, I didn't write this one down, but they made some sort of like tomato based tobacco or something and called it like tobacco <laughs> in, in one of the episodes. And then because that episode came out, someone ended up making it. So it ends I up, see. Okay. So it, they literally manifested it because <laughs> someone just wanted to prove it right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, another one, which is my personal favorite example, because uh, you know how I like got into like minor league baseball during the pandemic. I do, yeah. So in 2001, the uh, the episode has Homer protesting his baseball team, the Springfield Isotopes, moving to Albuquerque. Oh, how funny. And pretty quickly after that episode came out, a new team was moving to Albuquerque and they voted to change their name to the Albuquerque Isotopes oh, because of funny. the episode. So because so it's little things like that where they've created that's their cool, own domino though. effect. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, what could still happen? These are predictions. That oh God, are, don't tell me, please. These are some things the that great people bread are, shortage of 2021. <laughs> Can you imagine if the, one of the episodes I was about to talk about was like a complete bread shortage? Like, oh, the one, don't even start. The Wonder Bread Factory comes crashing. We're down. all eating Doctor Shoals now to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you man, I hope this podcast manifests nothing because at this point we're in danger. Listen, it's either there's no bread. To eat, or there's only foot inserts to eat. It's there's nothing no, in between. Nothing in between. <laughs> uh, so these are things that some people that some people think could still happen, and uh, that the the present day slash near future are showing signs of happening. Um, so in season eleven, the Simpsons go to 2030, where uh, they're eating virtual fudge with VR glasses and feeding tubes. Uh, which is very likely to happen in the future that there's a VR eating experiences. And specifically right now, I think Royal Caribbean, their cruise line company is trying to create VR dining on their ships. What? Where basically I'm, I'm guessing it's some sort of like, while you're eating Italian food, you you're, you're looking at like you're on the prettiest skyline of Italy or something. Um, but Scientists at Cornell, I think you don't need to be a scientist at Cornell for this. Apparently, scientist Christine Schieffer at Cornell found (laughs) that eating cheese in a pleasant area makes the dining experience better. Yeah, no (laughs) shit, Sherlock. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been scientifically proven now. uh, Oh, my God. So, wait, I'm sorry. We could put money toward that, but, like, we're not putting money toward, like, hey, male birth control. No, 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 no. Right, 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 right. We need to figure out how to eat cheese outside of your bed. That's the new Which, by the way, the hardest step to that is getting out of bed. Precisely. What are you talking about? Leave me alone in my bed to eat my cheese. So, eating cheese in a pleasant – I think they were testing it specifically with VR, that if you were eating this cheese while also in a VR experience, the cheese was more delightful than if you weren't in the VR experience. And so – How wild is that? They're using that as one of the early signs to conceptualize VR dining 
So I would that, love to be on trial. If anyone's doing a test, like if you need a test subject, <laughs> like I am fucking in it to win it. And that's assuming that cheese is still involved. Like the, what if it's <laughs> something it's else true. like Dr. Scholl's is part of the oh, VR no. experience. The most pleasant way to eat your Dr. Scholl's <laughs> answer. <laughs> You know, oh, if you if you eat your Dr. Scholl's while in a VR outer space setting, it's more fun than just eating foot inserts inside Earth. your bed. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, actually, we I would love. Does anyone out there have some grant money? Because I think Em and I <laughs> need some money to make this happen. I'm feeling hungry and I'm feeling <laughs> antsy to get out of my room. So <laughs> let's put those together. Oh, anyway, God. so that episode of VR eating is very possible. For yeah. The future. How wild. Um, also, another one is in 2016, there was an episode about the colonization of Mars. Um, and currently, right now, Elon Musk's SpaceX is right. developing um, Mars cargo flights, um, which should happen, I think, this year or maybe next year. Oh, God, I'm getting goose cam again. All of this is so freaky to think about. And they also have for 2023, they're planning a citizen based trip around the moon. And in 2024, there is a human mission to Mars planned. I feel like I remember them like finding the people for that. Do you remember that? They were Why just... wasn't I called? I wanted to eat cheese up there. Wait you a and I were slated to be first pick. On this I had Mars. my Dr. Scholl's ready. Why didn't they call me? Wait a minute. <laughs> Can you imagine you and I show up in our like shoe inserts and we're like, we're ready for our trip to Mars. Christine would bring a camera to vlog it on her YouTube. I, feel like. <laughs> I would bring like my wine bra and I don't think anyone would fault me. Okay. The best part is if you're in like zero gravity, what's the wine bra up to? Oh, just, like slosh in my, my man. Hitting you in the gonna face. Be, I'm going to have some f- floating honkers. Not back problems. Know. You won't have back problems. That's, that's right. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so a lot of what people a are uh, a lot of people are saying that that's possible. Although if the episode itself came out in 2016, I'm sure there was already discussion that yeah. kind of prompted them to write the episode around that. So I also wonder if the uh, if those the writers themselves are doing a self fulfilling prophecy based on current events. Sure, I mean, especially um, if they're going to places like Harvard, they probably know about right these sciencey things. Also, I know one person. I think one of the executive producers said that they have to write out ten months in advance because it takes about ten months for a whole episode to go from oh wow its very start point to being on the air. Sure, so they're writing scripts. And probably having to predict, like, where will we be in just 10 months, which isn't really that far away, but Fair. still in the future. So I imagine if they heard in 2016, like, the talk of colonization on Mars, they were like, oh, maybe 10 months from now, we've got, like, one more piece of the yeah, puzzle. Yeah, yeah. That makes so sense. So I wonder if that's how a lot of this... Did they predict coronavirus? Sense. Because we could have used it. We could have used a little clue. I have I have a, a bullet about coronavirus. Oh, okay. So, um. Real quick, though, I'll say another thing that could still happen is hologram mail, which happens in an episode about the future where Bart gets like a Star Wars hologram message. Cool. Which I am shocked doesn't happen. Actually, I think, yeah. I think we like kind of actually skyrocketed past that technology because now we've got That's like fair. FaceTime and shit. Like you don't, you need, don't really like, need a hologram, I guess. You don't need a pre-recorded more- image of me when yeah. I can just literally call you and tell you. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is interesting because you think like, what did they think would be the peak of technology mm-hmm. at one point, And you just totally flew past it. Totally. Um, in season 23, uh, Maggie is also in the future. Maggie gets an ultrasound from a robot nurse. Um, and right now, I mean, there are already medical robots. Sure. I mean, we've all seen that video of the one like peeling grape skin and like re it back on. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh, it's creepy. Oh, it's, that it's sounds to, very creepy. I think it's to show like um, the, how like precision like, or something. Per, like how microscopic precision, they, <sighs> like because they literally take they do surgery on a grape where they peel off the skin and then they're able to <gasps> sew the skin back on. Wow. Um. It, but so like, there's already nurses who do that, or there's uh, robot surgeons who do that. Um. There's diagnostic robots. I mean, everything really yeah. is a robot these well, days if it's a truly computer. We don't even think about it necessarily as a robot if it's like a computer, like you said. But Blaze and I were talking about that too with with the pandemic now. I think they're trying to fast, not necessarily fast track, but like use these tools more like robotic yeah. so that you can be away from other people and it's well, becoming more common. Interestingly, a month before coronavirus was some, was even mentioned in 
February 2020, Japan started making plans to develop a medical robot for ultrasounds, just like how they mentioned in the Simpsons episode, specifically uh, ultrasound robots that could work from people remotely so that Uh people don't have to go into the they don't have to go into the hospital anymore. That's so smart. It also reminds me of the first time I really got to know Blaze's personality because <laughs> Uh-oh. he a robot. Uh, okay, be- where are you going with this? Because <laughs> remember, he bought himself like that, like three hundred dollars stethoscope, and he was like, uh-huh. "It has Bluetooth, so you can you can send someone's like like numbers." Like I remember him being like, what if you were a doctor in Alaska and you can't get to a hospital <laughs> right away if you need the, if the hospital's somewhere else and you can go check someone's heartbeat and then it can Bluetooth sync to the nearest hospital. And oh, I was yeah. like, this guy is fucking crazy he about his stethoscope. Seriously. <laughs> his, his stethoscope, which he, by the way, lost and it was a big disaster. Yeah, it was bad. But also he has these tools for ultrasounds too, where like you can, it's all very high tech and I'm just like baffled. He's like, oh, the doctors at your hospital don't use this when I go in for Remicade and stuff. And I'm like, no, they literally have like a thermometer they put on my face. Like there's nothing like, <laughs> and he like goes to the emergency room with all his like weird tools and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot. I- I will say I was I didn't even know that there could be a stethoscope that did that. So he did blow my mind and make me realize that like there's medical instruments that are like far beyond my understanding. Yeah, totally. But um, but so anyway, the episode was about uh, ultrasound robots, and now they're trying to actually wow. make plans for ultrasound robots. Um, also, there was another episode where Homer invested all their money in having an underwater home oh. and currently <laughs> underwater lodging is kind of booming. Like no it's way becoming a big travel destination. There's a lot of like hotels that are now underwater. I, feel I like think that's it's something you would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a, I, I don't know if the whole hotel itself yet is, but they have like a, a special suite where it happens to go under the water and you are basically your room is an aquarium or like how would give me um, so much anxiety i would have dreams about the walls like breaking in and oh me. without question <laughs> um i couldn't do it but so apparently like un- they came up with that idea before this became a tourist attraction that's funny and right now japan is trying to create the ocean spiral which what? is sustainable housing underwater for hundreds of people at a time. Listen, that's so, wild. It's literally like an apartment complex underwater and it would be completely powered, I think, by like the ocean's energy. Sure. Um, I just love that we're like, on one end, we're going to Mars. On the other end, we're like, <laughs> no, let's go further into the Earth. We're going high and we're going low. And, <laughs> and, we're, and we're not staying here. That's for Nowhere damn Nowhere in between. <laughs> uh, and then the last one I wanted to uh, say real quick is that there was an episode in 2016 where uh, it predicted that Ivanka Trump is going to run for president 2028. Great. And Homer was wearing an Ivanka 2028 campaign button. Stop. They have this specific year on it. Oh, great. Uh-huh. Yeah. Great, so, great, 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 great. Then again, like that happened in 2016 when Trump became president. So I'm sure there was like a a lot of talk about like, oh, I bet the rest of his family is going to show, you know, like. Uh, so anyway. Uh, anyway, like I'm sure like it when talk of Trump was huge, yeah. that was also a conversation. So <sighs> they potentially prophesized that Ivanka will be running for president. And as for COVID, uh, a lot of people ended up falling for a meme that got created that implied that the Simpsons predicted COVID. Um, It was like a bunch of different clips all kind of mashed together to show you different parts of the episode that, that hinted Uh. at COVID, but it was actually apparently a compilation of different episodes about just general colds. Somebody has too much time on their hands. Yeah. So it wasn't, they did not predict COVID, but someone is putting information out there, making it look like they did. But, um, (laughs) one executive producer named Bill Oakley, this is his quote when asked about this stuff. He says, it's mainly just coincidence because episodes are so old that history repeats itself which makes sense if it's been around for that long. Mm -hmm. At some point you can start picking up patterns, I think. Yeah. And then uh, writer Al Jean said, if you make enough predictions, then 10% will turn out to be right. Which I think is kind of cool. And I went to Harvard, so you can't challenge my statistics. (laughs) I am a Harvard (laughs) mathematician. 10% of the time, I'm always right. Um, 
And then the last thing I wanted to say is if you wanted to see these episodes for yourself, Disney Plus has a playlist collection called The Simpsons Predict. For real? And I don't know if all of the episodes are on there, but at least a, a chunk of them are all How episodes cool. with little clips where things have been predicted over time. So I didn't know anyway, that. Anyway, those are the predictions from The Simpsons. Wow, that was so cool. Um, I, <laughs> Thank that you. Gave, oh, that gave me the shivers. Uh, oh, good. That's fascinating. I'm telling you. I mean, I, it, it makes sense, though. Like, if you went to Harvard, so you're clearly smart, you're clearly now educated, and you're writing, like, satirical comedy so you're like supposed to be a judge of character you probably yeah. have a very smart outlook on how the world's gonna go i would also think because a lot of people say when it comes to the simpsons if people are like oh i don't get their humor people say well you have to be like really smart to like keep up with it or it's like, like next level yeah yeah, yeah 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 so like i would imagine that their story That's why i watched it when also... i was five because <laughs> you were a fucking genius i didn't get it i was what like they're happened? yellow <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no so i mean it yeah, it definitely makes sense that if like all of the writers really prioritize mm -hmm. academia and critical thinking, then why wouldn't something that they come up with probably come true? Yeah, no, it makes total you sense. Know? So anyway. Wow. I mean, then again, maybe he is a time traveler and he was like, I know how to make the longest running show in history. I mean, I'm not in academia. So like, I think for sure he's a time traveler it makes, without yeah, question. I'm a, that I'm makes in. more sense to me. And that's the only logical explanation. That's what I'm saying. Matt <laughs> Groening and Marty McFly are the same person. And that's that. That's the end. That's M's uh, dissertation from Harvard. The end. <laughs> that's, the, that's the final line of this episode. That's the thesis statement. <sighs> okay. Wow. Well, that was fun, M. Um, I have actually, speaking of kind of like a wild ride, I have like a wild ride of a tale here for you. Um, this is the story of Miriam Rodriguez, and it's a it's a pretty newly broken story. So it's like kind of guess who guess who sent this to me and said you should cover this. Take one guess. Your mother, Al Pal. Oh, really? What? Yeah, Allison's she doesn't even text me. What, is, <laughs> yeah, what are you talking yeah, about? Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, no. She texted me an article from the New York Times and said like you should cover this, and I was I read it and I was like holy cannoli i would have never guessed it was else i was about to say like the name back to you that you just told me like mary rodriguez or whatever oh. what'd you, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah she told she called me herself yeah i thought she was like new york times i got christine Schieffer on speed dial we gotta tell my story <laughs> oh god no what if it was the simpsons they predicted all of it <laughs> matt groaning actually called you and said like here hot off the press hot read all about press. it i'll throw you a bone um so this is a pretty newly so Allison suggested this and uh, sent me the New York Times article. So most of the info is from that article. It was like a really big piece. It's super well done and well written. Um, and uh, some of the pictures that will be in the video are from there as well. And then the rest is just um, taken from other, you know, news sources pretty much. But New York gotcha. Times basically like made this big headlines. So nine years ago on January 23rd, 2012, the world of the Rodriguez family of San Fernando, Tamaulipas, Mexico, was turned hmm. upside down. Uh -oh. Dun, dun, dun. So Karen, Alejandra, Sali oh, there's a lot of names that I might mispronounce, and I apologize. Just heads up. Cool. Karen Alejandra Salina Rodriguez, who was 20 years old, was in her pickup truck about to merge into traffic when two trucks pulled up on either side, stopping her. Armed men forced their way into her truck and took off with her in the back seat. Oh. It was the Zetas drug cartel. Los Z Los oh, Zetas. I know them well. I know them well. <laughs> they also called me. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> They were like, don't mention us. Or I have else. a lot of friends. And I'm like, let me see how to pronounce it. Yeah. Los Zetas. Okay. So they are, they were once an armed wing of the Gulf cartel. But they're a Mexican criminal syndicate regarded as one of Mexico's most dangerous drug cartels, and they are known for their brutally violent torture tactics. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. they even, this sounds to me like a Criminal Minds episode, they even organized death matches between the innocent people they had kidnapped. What are death for matches? Entertainment, like made them like fight to the death. <gasps> like people oh. they had kidnapped. Oh. Yeah. And that actually is a Criminal Minds episode. So maybe Criminal Minds also predicts the future. Who's Wait a say? minute. Maybe Matt Groening 
also has a true crime podcast and then just turned it into a TV show and called the criminal minds and then went back to Futurama. Was that too much? No. Uh, it was the, it was the right amount. Just, continue. I just closed my eyes and kept walking with you. I don't know where we are. <laughs> I but. think you closed your eyes and you're like, your head kind of started like bobbing around, like trying to figure it out. But. Yeah. My wine bra is sloshing left and right. And you're just dragging me along. You know what? Everything I said makes the most sense to me and you can't take that from me. So thank you. And I won't even try. Instead, I'll read the next bullet. Thank you. Deathmatch. <laughs> so, according to a 2020 article in the Irish Times, more than 250,000 people have been killed and 60,000 have disappeared, quote-unquote, since former President Felipe Calderón launched the so-called drug war in 2006. Wait, and all of them are thought to be involved with that? Not that specific cartel, okay. but just within the sphere of, like, drug cartels and the, quote-unquote, okay. war on drugs. Um those Got are it. like the casualties. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like- I mean, they are real bad. Um, like real Oof. bad. But okay. yeah, that was the total number. So Los Zetas were so feared that Karen, who was just kidnapped by them, her older brother, Luis, had actually moved away to escape the danger. Um, but Karen had stayed to finish school and help her mother run her shop, which was a cowboy apparel shop called Rodeo Boots. Aww. Yeah, so she stayed to help her mom run the shop um, and finish her school. And unfortunately, didn't, she was didn't kidnapped. make it. So 2012, in like specifically, was a very, very dark time in San Fernando. Uh, many bars and restaurants had closed out of a fear of shootouts. And get this, mass graves were so common that finding fewer than 20 remains at a time was barely worth a headline. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. It was just a war zone. Like, it was just terrible jesus okay um los Etas would snatch innocent people for ransom to finance their war or they would uh kidnap them to conscript them basically for their side so they would like kidnap them and then force them to join them wow in their gang wow um karen unfortunately had become their latest target but oddly enough uh she ended up unexpectedly Uh, not being the only person to disappear that day. So they took her from her truck, drove her to her family's home where Karen lived during the week while her mom uh, was away. Her mom worked as a nanny in Texas during the week. So her mom would be gone during the week and Karen would like watch the house basically. Got it. Cool. So they took her to her house. um, And while she was on the living room floor laying there bound and gagged, somebody knocked at the door. And it was a mechanic who had, unfortunately, picked the wrong time to come work on the family truck. Um, Right. Okay. I mean, out of a fucking movie. So he comes and knocks on the door. The kidnappers panic and grab him, too. And then they flee with the both of them. That poor fucking guy. I know. So the Rodriguez's were soon contacted by Karen's kidnappers, asking them for $2,000. And so the cartel ended up... They uh, Like I said, they didn't expect to kidnap this mechanic. So they just ended up letting him go. He wasn't their target. So they kept Karen. Wow, and sent, lucky. I know. Oof. And sent a message to Karen's family. So this was all very planned out. So they sent a me- message to Karen's family asking for $2,000. Um, so Miss Rodriguez, um, Karen's mother, Miriam, questioned this mechanic in detail about everything he had heard or seen during the brief time that he was with them uh, and alongside Karen. And then Miriam took out a loan from a bank that offered lines of credits for such payments. So I guess this is just the ransom loan bank. Um, yeah, I guess. Ooh, and uh, she and her husband followed all the instructions. Uh, he dropped off the bag of cash near the health clinic that they had asked him to drop the cash off at. And then he waited at the local cemetery for the kidnappers to free Karen. But uh. shockingly, not shockingly, Karen never came. <sighs> So okay. that was basically the start of this, like, horribly uh, torturous, like, endless back and forth negotiation between the family and the cartel. Um, the weeks that followed were, like, I mean, it was, like, very, very heartbreaking. And I read, there was, I think it was a New York Times article, but they talked about, like, how when somebody disappears from your family or, like, a loved one disappears, you don't even get that closure or that grief process that, like, people do right. if someone dies because you get strung along by hope. Hope, And it, yeah. like, ends up just crushing you because you're, like up and down and up and down like at any second they could come home yeah right right and you can't like let go you can't like get closure in that way so anyway it was this horrible back and forth negotiation 
Um, there were calls, threats, false promises. They more money. They kept sending more money. Um, but the Rodriguez family like couldn't give up on their daughter. They just thought like maybe this time they'll actually take the money and give her back. Um, so one day, uh, sick and tired of getting nowhere in the plea to have her daughter return, Miriam Rodriguez decided she was going to just reach out to the cartel and ask them to meet up. Oh, and, okay. Uh, they were like, sure. Just get together, just have a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> Legitimately. Wow. So they, to her shock and to my shock, they were like, yeah, sure, let's get together. To my shock, yeah. Uh, so she waited at a restaurant downtown called El, oh God, El Junior. It's spelled like Junior. El Junior. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, until she was joined by a slender man wearing not slender man <laughs> oh, okay i was like well, this <laughs> took quite a turn can you imagine a slender man ran the cartel oh my god and also a a, a moth man oh my and god also <laughs> <laughs> he runs the competing cartel yeah um <laughs> so this this like kind of lanky man shows up he's wearing a walkie talkie and he sits down across from her okay so she spends the time like begging him to release her daughter and uh, he has his little radio, his walkie talkie that's kind of burbling. Gur I don't know the right word. Like it's kind of talking on and off. Gurgling. I Gurgling. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Babbling. I don't know. It's muttering. Muttering. Something? It's talking itself away. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> kind of like we do. I was going to say. <laughs> so the man insisted that the cartel did not have her daughter but he offered to help find her for a fee of $2,000. So Miss Rodriguez agreed to pay, even though she didn't have much hope that this was true. And as he left through the static of his burbling radio, uh, she heard someone call him by his name. And his name was Sama. Okay. So this Sama. is just like an origin story for you. It feels like it so far. Right? It's like, Very okay, dramatic. We've, got, we've got a clue. Finally. And obviously, I'm not right. Exactly, I'm not doing the doing the New York Times article justice. Obviously, but um, it's really well done. So, um, although Miriam does send him the two thousand uh, dollars, after a week, he just completely stops answering her calls. So again, just more money lost and no hope left. She instead starts uh, being bombarded with other people claiming to be the kidnappers. I mean, this is where you just see like the worst of humanity, like people yeah. just taking advantage of this. People just and, want your money. Yeah. And calling and saying like, no, no, we know where she is. Give us the money. And they'd say things like just $500. And the Ugh. Rodriguez family like couldn't stop. They just like kept sending it because they thought like maybe this is the real one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, think of how fast like you could get cleaned out just because yeah. like maybe one of these people is telling the truth. Exactly. And so they kept sending it to everybody that asked. Um, wow. But they send the money anyways. Uh, a new burst of hope would fill Miriam every time she sent a payment and then it would be crushed again when there was no callback and no sign of Karen. Mm. So by this point, Miriam, who was actually already separated from her husband, actually moved in with her older daughter, Azalea. Um, Azalea recalls one morning, a few weeks after the last payment, that her mother came down the stairs and told her very, like, matter-of-factly, very calmly, said, Karen is never coming back and there's little chance she's alive. And then she said that she wouldn't stop until she found the people who had taken her daughter and she would hunt them down until the day she died. Okay. Just very matter-of-fact. Yeah. Yeah. So Miriam didn't have much to go off, uh, but she did have her first clue. Sama. Sama. Yes. Uh -huh. So she uh, took that and then she took all the information that the mechanic had told her about anything he could remember from being in that scenario. And she then did uh, a very Christine move and got on Facebook and started to stalk their social media. I mean, what else do you do at that point? Like, right? Like, what other resource do you have? Like, you she know? already met up with the guy in person. Like, yeah. at this point, social media is probably the only, the best bet. So, basically, she just needed to find Sama, whoever this Sama character was. She needed to find him. Um, so, she started sleuthing social media. Uh, hours upon hours, she scrolled through Karen's Facebook profile, looking for any clues of how she might have been stalked or connected sure. to these people. Yeah. Um, and then one morning, her sleuthing leads her to a Facebook photograph tagged with the name Sama. <gasps> and it was the same fucking guy. She recognized oh his 
his like lanky build, uh, his clean shaven face. She was like, that's the guy I met with. So finally that, she had that's like Slender Man. That's, that's Slender Man. Yeah. <laughs> My coffee date. Yes. <laughs> so she she picked she picked up on this immediately and was like, okay, so first step in her hunt. So standing beside him in the photo that she found was a young woman, and she was wearing the uniform of an ice cream shop that was two hours away <gasps> in a different city. This is Christine. It's like if Christine... <laughs> I know! I was like, yes, girl! It's like if Christine and Liam Neeson got together to do, like, the, the wow. reboot of, of Taken. That's just... I got goose cam for real, Um, That was... It's, like, just, not, it's just not Taken, but, the like, ultimate. the Christine files? <laughs> the Christine files. The Christine sits on it, it, the. The problem is, it would be the worst movie because I would literally just be on Instagram into it would the just wee be you on a, It would be you on a couch scrolling through Facebook, and that'd be like three fourths of the the whole episode and downloading like because I so when I was in oh god like a preteen, I got really good at like scouring like county files, like county tax files. You're, uh, okay. it's like really a problem. Like I I, I developed quite. I, I mean, to be fair, I finally got my kind of comeuppance um, when I got that. PI job and I was like I was gonna say this is again you're Liam Neeson because you're like I have a very specific set of skills <laughs> that nobody taught me and nobody should know and nobody, yet here I am and nobody cares about because they're not gonna help you in life at all <laughs> and yet if you need to know all about a county clerk from five years five years ago I will teach you everything I know oh I got you man I got you I uh so I was just like yes Miriam get it because I was like that's exactly how you do this shit so she sees the woman he's with and she has this uniform on and it's an ice cream shop. So she finds the ice cream shop. It's two hours away. So, oh my God, I just love this woman. So what she does, where am I? I already lost my spot. Oh my God. I'm ice so, cream. So worked up. Ice cream. You remember. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So instead of calling the police, Miriam decides she's just going to keep taking this into her, into her own hands. Like I mean, she's Liam doing a good Neeson. job. Like Liam Neeson, Just, exactly. You're not letting me have this moment here, but yet every <laughs> other sentence you say confirms my point here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miriam Neeson. Okay. Uh, yes, there it is. Okay. That's <laughs> so, all I wanted. <laughs> yeah, you can have it. So she drives to this shop two hours away and stalks the, st the ice cream store for, for weeks until she like fully has memorized this woman's working schedule. Wow. And then she waits outside during her shifts until one day Sama shows up <gasps> to meet his girlfriend at the ice cream shop. Oh my gosh. So she follows the couple home, writes down their address. I just love this because she doesn't like confront them. She just like does sleuthing from the she, back. She lets she lets life do what it's gonna do. Totally. And she's an observer. Totally. I also that was bold for her with one picture to assume that they were dating or would ever see each other again though, because I know. I would have thought like, okay, well, they were in a picture together, but like, I'm in a picture with a lot of people. I well, I mean, but she probably had again. from that picture, she had their profile, so maybe she could tell. Like, oh, maybe, you know what yeah. I mean? Because he was tagged in it. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not I, positive, yeah, that, but I was well, shocked too. I was like, wait, they're like, dating? I was like, that's a that's a leap to be like, oh, he'll definitely be at the ice cream shop at some point. Totally. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I'm wondering if like maybe, who knows what the caption was, or maybe, yeah. I don't know. But Hopefully seemed... it says, I love my Slender Man, <laughs> especially when I work from two to six every Thursday yeah. at this ice cream shop. His favorite is mint chocolate chip. And also, comes... our address is this, yeah. and <laughs> we have your child. Also, here's your daughter and all your money back, I wish. Right. Um, so she follows them to their house, writes down their address, and she then contacted the police to let them know of her findings. Just be like, I'll let you in on my in intel. <laughs> Um, but they said in order for them to do anything, she needs more than an address. She needs a name. Sama. And, yeah. So she knows Sama, but that's it. She doesn't, I guess, know any more detail about this oh. guy and they need like his identity in oh, order to oh, go okay. get him. Um, so she's like, all right, fine. So she cuts her hair and dyes it bright red. Good night. <laughs> so that, uh, Sama won't recognize her. And then she finds a government uniform that she happened to have kept from an old low-level job at the health ministry, which again sounds very Christine because I'm a, a, a nut who like keeps everything 
if there was just a in P- case, if there was a PI uniform you got, you own it to this day. <laughs> if there's like a uniform from an ice cream shop I got, I probably still own it. To oh this my god, I, I literally still have my my hat from Chipotle. Like, yeah! I, why not? Why that's not? pretty cool, though. To be fair, I was like, no one else gets one of these. No, that's like, actually pretty cool. Unless um, you earned your place o- yep. above the corn salsa. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Once, uh, Bla- so when we left LA, Blaze was leaving his job at the hospital there, obviously. And I was like, oh, I'm, he's like, I'm going to throw these scrubs away. And I was like, no, I want to keep them. And he's like, why? I was like, I don't know. And I still have them. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? I don't know, but I have them just in case. Like, it's really silly but my yeah. my mom she's about to change out the flooring in the basement and it's the same carpet since we moved in in 96 Ooh. <laughs> and so i told her i was like can you cut a square out for me and she was like what will you do with this and i was like you don't need to know and i don't even need to know so i just want it <laughs> i don't even just, need to just know. cut me a square i don't know why you can't just say yes and move on that's all i want Em and I are highly sentimental people. I don't think you've noticed everybody from it's, listening it's to It's one of those show. things where it's like we – neither of us know what we're going to do with our carpet or our scrubs. Certainly But not. in the middle of the night one night, we're going to figure it out and it's going to be so fucking genius. It will be. Yeah. I mean, listen, if Miriam needed it to literally capture these murderers, like who knows what a carpet might do? Well, even like my – so my, uh, my grandpa who passed away – his wife always saved all of his ties after Aww. he died. And so I guess this year for Christmas, it hasn't gotten to me yet, but apparently she made each of the grandkids um, a pillow out of all of his ties. <gasps> that is so cute. So like, imagine what you can do with scrubs because those are m- much fatter than ties. Thank you. I mean, I hope You're he welcome. doesn't die because I don't want it, I don't want a reason to make a no, sentimental no, no. item with it. But well, I'm just saying you could make it for the cats and be like, look. That is na- a great idea. Halloween costumes. Listen. The options are endless. If you have endless. any, tweet them at me. <laughs> endless. You could be Liam Neeson in a, in, a, in a hospital. You could just... Yeah, I could show up to a hospital and say, I am Liam Neeson. And you could just wear the scrubs and go on Facebook and you have your whole costume right there. There we go. Listen, I could impersonate Blaze. And no I've done it. It's know. fun. You have done it. That's true. <laughs> um, well, do you want to do it again? Because I have like six pairs of scrubs. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> with his name on it. Only if I can have the $300 stethoscope with my costume this time. Oh, man. Well, it's in the streets of LA somewhere because it got lost. So you could probably find it. I'll, I'll do some uh, some dumpster diving. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so she has this uniform from an old, like, low-level job that she's kept miraculously. So she dyes her hair red, puts on this uniform, somehow gets her hands on, like, a fake official-looking ID. And she starts conducting a fake poll of Sama's neighborhood to get his basic information. Okay. And with this information now, she goes to the authorities, local, state, and federal with his identity, but no one will fucking help her. She has like a whole like laptop laptop bag full of files. Uh, they described Whoa. her as a she looked like a door to door salesperson. Uh, she went from person to person and was like, "Please help me." And she was not taking no for an answer, but everybody was telling her no. Eventually, she finds a federal police officer willing to assist, and this man has remained anonymous because he said he's not allowed to speak publicly, but he was quoted in the article as saying, when she pulled her files onto the table, I had never seen anything like it. The details and information gathered by this woman working all alone were incredible. She had gone to every single level of government, and they had slammed the door in her face. To help her hunt down the people who took her daughter, it was the greatest privilege of my career." Whoa. So first of all, that sounds like how anyone would disc- that's how me and Eva talk about you after you do the most basic Instagram search <laughs> of people. You're like, find this person based on this side profile. And I'm like, here's their social security. I've number. literally seen you go off of someone's eye color and first name and find everything one could know about them. So yeah, I, I would be really impressed. That's a really big compliment. I appreciate it. I feel like I wasted so many hours of my life developing those skills and when I was not hanging out at parties in high school. So I appreciate uh, the, the kindness toward them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so then uh, she finally got this guy to help her. But at this point, it was too late because this MFer, Sama, had left town. Uh So he didn't live there anymore. So she was like, well, shit, I went through all that trouble to get his address and now he's gone. So she was frustrated, heartbroken, like annoyed. But she was like, well, I'm going to keep going. 
So Miriam continued with her social media stocky skills, and she tried to identify the rest of the crew. And soon enough, she had a stack of photos of Sama posing with other people. So she kind of gathered like his friend group and found the identities of these other people he was spending time with. As All potential of his members homies. Of All his of his homies. homies. Yeah. Totally. And then on September 15th, 2014, which is the eve of Mexican Independence Day, the wildest shit happens. Like, this is where the universe was like, okay, Miriam, I'll throw you a bone. So Miriam Rodriguez's son, Luis, was closing down his own shop in Ciudad Victoria to attend the Independence Day festivities with his family, which is like street parties, parades, fireworks. So he's closing down his shop and he notices one last customer who's browsing the hat section. And it was a young, slender man. (gasps) And he looks at him and he's like, holy shit, that's that Sama guy my mom is trying to track down. And he just happens to be in his shop. Like, he's just wandering the hat aisle. What? Okay. (sighs) So I'm like, thank God. Celebrities, they're just like you. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Browsing the fedoras. Yeah, just like me. (laughs) Oh, my God. So, yeah. So he goes, holy shit, that's the guy my mom's, like, trying to find. So really stealthily, Luis uh, follows him home. Uh, careful not to lose him and then obviously has called police as well to say like i've spotted this guy come get him so he follows him home and the police arrest sama in the central plaza so they fucking nailed him wow when they were arresting him he was kicking and screaming and he claimed he had a heart condition which i don't think is even true and was basically like freaking out and uh they were able to bring him to the police station unscathed and in custody he actually filled in details missing from miss rodriguez's investigation um he revealed some of the names and locations of accomplices that she had like gotten Whoa. photos of and so finally she's filling in the gaps of like what she could get from social media and now what he's telling her or telling the police um, wow. so one of the names was this kid basically named chris christian jose zapata gonzalez an 18-year-old, he had, like, just turned 18. So he had been a teenager, um, which is just very sad. And he was f- terrified during this police questioning. Um, and Miss Rodriguez sat outside the interrogation room with a friend, and she was watching this go on. And the teenager asked if he could see his mother. And then he told the officer he was hungry. So Miriam, touched, entered the room and gave the teenager her own fried chicken lunch, And then left to buy him a Coke and came back to bring him a Coke. And the officer was like, what are you doing, Miriam? Like, we're trying to interrogate this guy and you're feeding him chicken. And I mean, my also, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. It was not important. I, I, when I said, well, when you first said the, she gave him her fried chicken, I was like, that's not even just like a normal lunch. That's not a bologna sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that's not your average Joe, you know, Caesar salad. That's that's the creme de la creme right there. And that's uh, not an extra. That's her lunch too. Yeah. Like so you should have just... you should have given it to him after he solely found your child. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. What you should have like dangled it in front of him and said like this is for yeah, yeah exactly. But it worked because he's like this officer is like what the hell are you doing, Miriam? And she replied that this boy was still a child no matter what he did, and I am still a mother. Which wow. makes me tear up. So we're gonna keep going. That's uh, such a that's such a kind, wonderful maternal way to look at it, right? It's so powerful in a space where I don't have the instincts for that yet. So yeah, I would, yeah, totally. Would have never thought that way. Wow. What, you and I giving up our fried chicken? Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not gonna happen. We don't give each other fried chicken unless you have a million dollars in that sweet little pocket of yours. You are not touching to buy this fried more chicken. fried chicken, right? <laughs> <laughs> to replace this fried chicken I'm about to lose. I don't even eat fried chicken anymore. But I, the thought is just like so disheartening. I literally, while you were talking, I without even thinking, because I'm at home and able to use my laptop right now. Without even thinking, I have shown up at Postmates on Popeyes. <laughs> it just appeared. It's like sleep it just, eating. Well, like we're 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 doing this at like lunchtime, my time, and I, without even thinking, just Freudian. <laughs> I am about to apparently order some fried chicken after this. So. I tell you guys, we can kill M pretty easy. I know M wants to kill. It'd be me with so bread. simple. Wait, I would. I the could worst drop is that dead. both of ours is food related. That's pretty telling. I think. It really. I mean, it's. I do think about like in terms of like oh. How easy would it be for someone to get me? So easy. Like, <laughs> it, like, it's embarrassing 
how it would be difficult to keep me alive. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear these stories and I'm like, I can't relate to any of this because my instincts are so bad. I would probably just like sit on Facebook. Survival. What's I'd that? be too scared to call somebody as Miriam. So I would just sit at home and find their Facebook and be like, well, dead mm-hmm. end. I can't make a phone call because I have anxiety. Time to eat more chicken. Time to eat my fried chicken. Um, so she basically says, I'm still a mother and he's still a child, which is just like putting yourself above the whole situation and is just so heartbreaking. Um, and her generosity worked in her favor because after eating and accepting her lunch, uh, Christian told them everything. He said that Mexican Marines had killed six of the other accomplices of Karen's kidnapping and murder. But he said, I'm willing to take you to the ranch where they killed them and where their bodies should still be buried. Whoa. So he led them to an abandoned ranch, and I'm going to put the photo um, up in the YouTube video, at the end of a dirt road where a tractor marked a gravesite. And so Miriam was uh, obviously there with the search party, and they found bones of varying sizes. They found bullet holes on the outer walls of the house. Uh, There was a noose hanging from a tree branch nearby. Yeah, I mean, really disturbing imagery um they also found a stack of personal belongings and amongst the debris miriam found karen's scarf <gasps> and she was like she was oh there. no it's just that like sinking feeling yeah um so she finds her scarf she also finds a seat cushion from karen's truck uh so she's like she was here but forensic agents claim karen was not among the dozens of bodies they had identified at the ranch but seeing the scarf and knowing what she knows, Miriam's like, no, no, I don't believe you. My daughter right. has to be here. Right. She was definitely here at some point. Like Exactly. There's, there's no chance like, that she made it and nobody else did. Her, or that her scarf made it there and she did it. Or it, yeah, it's just like, no, no, her, no. Her fucking seat got here. Yeah, like, right. Her butt, <laughs> like, her every butt part of her. Got here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So she's like, no, no, I'm going to dispute you on this. And, uh, so I put a little less than three symbol next to this bullet, like a little heart, like a, a little, little heart, heart, heart. <laughs> Yeah. Because it says a lot of officials had grown tired with Miriam Rodriguez's pushy attitude. They said she swore a lot and had a foul manner about her. And I'm like, yeah, I would. Do. Yeah. Duh. I have one and I don't even have a daughter to look for. Like bingo. Yeah. Sorry. It would be weird if she didn't have a yeah. pushy attitude or whatever. Can you imagine if she was like, that's fine. Never mind. Yeah, totally. It, she has a pushy attitude, but she's like giving fried chicken to like a little boy. I mean, she's not a fucking terrible person. Like, this just makes me mad. Yeah. So apparently they said they, they I think I'm going to read this bullet in a minute, but they said they didn't like her, but they respected her, which I was like, okay, that's pretty badass, I guess. Yeah. You know? Like, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, So as we already suspected, Miriam was right. The following year, a group of scientists found a piece of femur bone belonging to her daughter at the ranch. So she was right. And the officials, like I said, began to respect her because now she's like right about all of this. And she's basically moving this investigation forward herself. Um, And they didn't particularly like her, uh, but they did respect her. And Miss Gloria Garza, an official in the state government, said, quote, not everyone got along with her, but you respected her mission. <laughs> I was like, yeah, wow. I guess. I mean, how could you not? So now this is where it gets even just uh, wilder. So on the drive back from the ranch, uh, Miss Rodriguez passed Miriam passed a barbecue restaurant near the entrance of the dirt road that led to the ranch. And she uh, recognized this place. It's like sort of a flashback. She remembered having eaten there with her daughter, Azalea, only two days after Karen disappeared. Mm -hmm. And at the time, there was a neighborhood resident there. Her name is Elvia Uliza Betancourt. Betancourt. And she had been seated at a table by herself drinking a soda. And so... Miriam is remembering like two days after Karen disappeared, she was there with her older, her other daughter. And she saw this like neighbor of theirs that she had known since she was a kid. Like she had known this woman since she was a child. Wow. And um, this woman, Elvia had been abandoned by her mother who was a sex worker at the local brothel. And Miriam actually used to give Elvia Karen's old clothes to like help her support her as she was growing up. So it was like, she was the, Wow. The young woman that... What a nice woman at I all know. turns. Jeez. Every time I'm like waiting for her to like snap and it's, it's like I would... To- it'd be, be totally justifiable. Yeah. But every little piece... I'm, I mean, I know that one was like part of her past, but I'm like, when does she become 
when does she have one bad flaw? I so she's, far I have seen such none. a good movie. It's like she's a vigilante, but like with a heart of gold. You, you know? just want her to win. You just want her to win. Totally. So she recognizes. So this is she's having this flashback moment when she sees this restaurant near the ranch. And she's like, I remember I was there with uh, Azalea and I saw this woman, Elvia. And uh, so that day, Miss uh, Miriam had gone and said hello to Elvia and had said, have you heard about the news about Karen disappearing? And everyone had heard this news. It's not a big town at all. And Elvia goes, no, I'm, I don't know anything about it. And oh. she is thinking back now. I literally have goose cam just thinking about this. She's thinking back now in this flashback. Like it always struck me as weird that she acted like she had never heard this news, even though everybody knew about it. Right. Yeah. And now she's putting these pieces together of like, this is right next to the ranch where my daughter's body was found. This woman was acting so weird and like knew the fam knew our family and uh -huh. acted like she hadn't heard anything about Karen's disappearance. So, I mean, a lot of dots to connect that are very far apart where I'm like, holy sure. crap. So after driving by this restaurant, she starts to think maybe Elvia knew something. Maybe she was even sitting in that restaurant to uh, alert the cartel if the police were coming to the oh. ranch like maybe she was a lookout type person uh-huh okay so uh miriam races home she dives back into her research aka social media and she discovers that elvia was indeed romantically involved with one of karen's kidnappers what i know uh, oh what Ooh. i don't know if you can see the goose yeah cam. right it's I like don't know. it's like Ooh. okay it's so shivery um, and this guy, this kidnapper, was already in prison for an unrelated crime. But so she confirmed that Elvia was indeed ha most likely had some intel. Um, so what she did is just like the ice cream shop, she waited outside of the prison during visiting hours every single day waiting for Elvia to come visit her boyfriend in jail. Wow. And one day, uh, she's such a bad. I'm sorry. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, like she's like. Well, I guess we're doing the waiting game again. I guess I gotta sit in my car. And she's fucking rocking it. I mean, I this woman. Okay, I know, sorry. She's such a badass. No, truly. Like, oh my, uh, yeah. So she sits outside until Elvia finally shows up and calls police and is like, "Found her." And so police show up and literally take her in. And then they also discover that some of the ransom calls had actually been, had actually come from Elvia's house. So like this woman that no. had known, she had like clothed her as a child and is now. What? I was going to say the B word, but what? But, it, what a butt. What, what a, what a butt. What a big butt head. <laughs> what a, what a, what a booty head, you know? What a big booty head. Yes. Wow. So, like, I mean, yeah, the someone who's like actually like tended to you and been there for yeah. you and taking like, care of you when your mother abandoned you. Like, oh my it's god, that's next so terrible. Level. Okay. Yeah. So they take her in, find out that the ransom calls had come from her house, and uh, Miriam keeps going on her mission. She's just like left and right, just like put them away, put them away. Um, She's like, I'll fucking handle it. Don't worry. <laughs> you sit down. No, no one else is doing it, so I'll do it. <laughs> I'll text you when I find them. Jeez. Um, some of the culprits were already dead. Um, like I said, this was a very hostile and violent time in the area. Others were in jail. So she was looking for anyone who was still alive or still out on the street. And a lot of them had actually already started doing, uh, trying to forge a new life, either taxi driving, delivering gas, um, just being in sales or nannying. And so this made it extra difficult because they had basically started le leading new lives and had gotten their way out of the gang. So um, basically her entire mission wasn't, her entire mission basically turned this town like upside down. So her friends at some points, which understandably they were worried about her and they were like, maybe she's taking this too far. This is like the most dangerous gang in Mexico. And she's just like asking them for coffee and following them home. Like, right. I mean, understandably, they were nervous. Um, but one of her friends recalls her saying, I don't care if they kill me. I died the day they killed my daughter. I want to end this. I'm going to take out the people who hurt my daughter and they can do whatever they want to me. I mean, truly, so, like, I mean, that's a mom right there. Right. That's yeah. like just a like, mission. I, would, I mean, yeah, I do anything for my kid. Yep. Yep. It's ooh, it's shivery. Um, so she's like, thanks for your concern, but I'm going to keep going. 
So this whole- peace and blessings, <laughs> but um, I'm on my way. Thoughts and prayers to you and yours. I'm gonna keep <laughs> on my merry way. Um, yeah. So she keeps fucking going, and the whole town is like on edge now because she's like, I guess it was like unheard of that you go publicly go after a gang in Mexico. Like there was a silent agreement. You don't mess with them. They don't mess with you. But no, she's just like flying in the face of that and saying she's just poking the bear. Exactly. Exactly. So her next target was a guy named Enrique Yoel, oh God, I'm probably saying that wrong, Rubio Flores, uh, who was a born-again Christian living in Aldama, a small town of about 13,000 people. Miriam tracked down his grandmother and paid her a visit. And uh, Miriam told her about the situation, and according to uh, Atlanta News Now, the grandmother, with a heavy sigh, told her that the boy had always been trouble, but at least now he was going to church. <laughs> Uh, oh, because when the, when I first heard that, I was thinking like, oh, if you tell grandma what he's up to, he's going to get in fucking trouble. But then it was like, not. grandma was like, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, he was in a, a game. shame. Yeah, it is a shame. So uh, guess where Miriam went? She went to church. She went to his church. <laughs> <laughs> she just went to every single church and waited every single day right? uh, for all the mass times to figure out when exactly he'd be there. Yeah. So the grandma's like, at least he's going to church. And she's like, okay, cool. Where does he go to church? And she's like, yeah, this place down the road. So she goes to his church and she starts attending service at the chapel. And wow. sure enough, she sees him there and calls the police. And she's like, found another one. So <laughs> police come and arrest him um, inside the chapel and nobody could believe like what was going on because again, he was this like reformed man. Um, and one of the parishioners actually asked Miriam for mercy, like, where's your mercy? But according to her family who had actually come with her to the church, she firmly replied, where was his compassion when they killed my daughter? Oh yeah, bingo. They're like, I mean, right, where's your mercy? It's like, mercy? Yeah, Mer no I don't, I don't know mercy. her. What are you talking about? <laughs> right, it's just so wild to me. So the investigation continued and according to the New York Times, this is like just, I think the best way to sum this up. Quote, Miriam cut her hair, dyed it, disguised herself as a pollster, a health worker, an election official to get names and addresses. She invented excuses to meet their families, unsuspecting grandmothers and cousins who gave her details, however small. She knew their habits, friends, hometowns, childhoods. End quote. It's just so cool. Um, her next target was a man she had been hunting for a year. And this is kind of where things turn so she had this is where things turn okay <laughs> they turn like back to the, i don't know in a big circle it's just all so chaotic <laughs> they turn um 360 degrees actually <laughs> or no yeah. 180 yeah they turn into a big tornado and everything just goes everywhere <laughs> okay so her next target was this man she'd been hunting him for a year and she had interrogated the criminals he had worked with to find his whereabouts and had even befriended some of his relatives uh for clues so she discovered that he was actually working in texas as a florist um, which he had actually done before joining the Zeta cartel and getting involved in her daughter's kidnapping. So he was on the run and now he was back to selling flowers, which is what he had done before. So okay. apparently as soon as she discovered his whereabouts, she woke up without even like getting showered or dressed threw a trench coat over her pajamas, a baseball cap over her like still bright red hair, put a gun in her purse and headed for the border to find this she guy. Was, there's no time to waste. She no. was like, She's get, my get my galoshes, get my <laughs> rain hat. We're on our way. We're on my rain hat over my pajamas. <laughs> I'm picturing like Paddington Bear now. <laughs> I am too. I was about like with like a machine gun all of a it's sudden. It's like Mama Bear, but Paddington Bear. Like with I, a like, machine uh, gun. Oh I'm thinking God. of Paddington Bear, but after puberty where he's all like buffed out. He's it's like, like maternity edition. Oh. Yeah. It kind of, yeah, sure. <laughs> However you need it. Yes. Oh, beautiful. So, so she takes a gun. She gets to the border on the bridge. She's scouring the vendors for flower carts, but apparently he's selling sunglasses this day, but okay. <laughs> she, she sees him and she gets too excited and too close. And apparently he recognizes her and runs. <gasps> so he sprints along the narrow pedestrian pass trying to get away. And Miriam, who at this time, by the way, is 56, grabs him by the shirt, wrestles him to the rails, jams Damn. her handgun into his back. And says, if you move, I'll shoot you. Wow. And by the way, her family members are with her again. They're just like going with her. Here's Juniper, by the way. Um, 
her family members are just going with her to all these places and being like, mom, be careful. And she's like running out with a handgun. I mean, it sounds almost like a national lampoon situation of like, oh, we're all on a family holiday. Spring break. Yeah. But the only reason we're even at this spring break is because we have to go (laughs) find this murderer. And also, oh, there goes mom again with the gun. Oh, who gave mom a gun? Yeah, Chasing him down. Wow. And also what a full circle because, I mean, truly in like at in a in a movie sense of storytelling it's like this was such a lovely nice woman who donates clothes and yep. helps children and now all of a sudden she's like on the outskirts of yes. town with a, a vigilante throwing a gun into someone's back looking for her kid oh wow. yeah it's so badass and like That's you're right you like so root for her growth character development character development <laughs> you ever heard of it simpsons writers yeah okay take, check it out next time you're in the future check not it <laughs> bring it back here because we need it okay <laughs> <laughs> um so she wrestles him to the ground uh or to the rails jams a handgun into his back says if you move i'll shoot you and apparently she held him there for nearly an hour waiting for the police to arrive which i can only imagine that hour of like holding a gun to him and being like nope we're still sitting here that's like that, like mom lifting a bus yeah, off your kid. Str- totally, like, the, the adrenaline, adrenaline must uh-huh. have just been insane. Yeah, totally. Mama bear, no joke. Don't mess, don't mess. So Miriam's campaign, uh, unfortunately, took a turn for the worse because in March of 2017, nearly two dozen prisoners escaped the penitentiary in Ciudad Victoria, where Miss Rodriguez had put away her daughter's killers. So several of the people she'd already put away escaped from jail. So, Great. So yeah. now she has to go back out and do this so all over like, fucking really, again. You let him. You let him go. It's like mousetrap. You know. Yeah, you like, had one job. I got him for truly, you. Just keep that's him so here. True. Like I put them here. Just like close the door. Oh, no, they're out. So naturally, she became worried because she is becoming, uh, you know, expectedly uh, Los Zetas' number one enemy. Uh, so she asked the government for protection. And so the police are like, oh, yeah, we'll send periodic patrols to your home and work. And she's like, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the bare minimum. Thank but also, you. that's not what I want. It's not going to work. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Yeah. So she's frustrated by their inaction, but she still kept going. Like, she didn't stop her rogue mission um uh so she (laughs) my god this is just uh she decides to uh find her next target and it's a young woman who had left town and begun working as a live-in nanny for a family in ciudad victoria and classic miriam literally sits outside this house in her car for several days waiting for the young woman to leave at and this point at this point it really is classic miriam classic miriam she's 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 got one one real tell all and it's when she's sitting and waiting for days to figure out a schedule she's in that and she's in that acura out front and you're like oh mom there she oh is oh my gosh uh so she sat literally in her car to the point m that she was urinating in cups like she didn't leave the car um, oh my god she apparently ran her car battery down listening to the radio in the dark, so much so that Louise had to come sneak onto the street to jump her car for her. Okay. <laughs> Mom. Uh, <laughs> That's just like your like the quirky little sidekick that shows up every now <laughs> I know. and then. He's after like, a really tough again. scene. <laughs> now I gotta put my galoshes on. <laughs> so, <laughs> she spots the woman leaving the house finally after several days. Police get her. But while Miriam is excitedly running to the scene, she breaks her foot <gasps> and fractures her foot. So a couple a month later, she's still wearing her cast and using crutches. And on Mother's Day, May 10th, which is Mother's Day in Mexico, um, as Miriam exited her car at 1021 p.m. on her crutches, a white Nissan truck carrying men who had escaped the prison in March quietly pulled up behind her, according to, to the police report. They fired 13 rounds and she died instantly. Wow, that is not the ending I expected. I know. That was where my heart just like sank into my stomach. Whoa. Okay. Wow. So. Is that a a the end situation? Almost. (laughs) Oh my God. Horribly, her husband, who was inside watching TV, found her face down outside their house on the street, (gasps) uh, hand tucked inside her purse next to her pistol. So. Miriam's death, I mean, it was, like, one of those moments that sparked, like, everybody to kind of finally acknowledge how bad things were. Uh, And the Mexican government scrambled to react. They got two of the culprits back in prison. Um, A couple others were killed in a gunfight. And as for the people who ordered the hit 
on Miriam. Apparently their identities are still a mystery for whatever reason. Whoa. Um, and so in June, about a month after Miriam's death, officials in the state of Veracruz uh, acted with information Miriam had provided and arrested yet another suspect in Karen's case. And this is pretty graphic. This gets to like what the cartel was doing. Okay. Um, so it turns out this woman that they arrested later had beaten and tortured Karen during the kidnapping, hanging her up like a boxing bag and punching her. Uh, and after that, the woman fled to Veracruz where she drove a taxi for a living while raising her son. So they had found another, uh, another perpetrator and Luis, her son was obviously devastated, but he, and he for a little while was obsessing over who these mysterious killers were that had killed his mother. But he basically said he learned his lesson and said, I won't make the same mistakes as my mom. Like, I don't want this to take over my life and, and my life because I'm obsessing over her murder. So she had done so much um, for not only herself and her daughter, but for local families as well. She had started a collective of parents of abducted children. um, And her son, Luis, actually took it over when she died. And uh, the after Miriam's death, um, the governor of Tamaulipas tweeted that the state government will not allow the death of Miriam Rodriguez to be one more statistic. Uh, So her campaign it all wrapped up, ended up being made up of case files, witness testimony, confessions from the criminals she tracked down, dozens of interviews with relatives, police officers, friends, officials, and local residents. And it basically like turned this town, San Fernando, on its head. So she had taken down 10 people. No one had ever challenged organized crime in this way and definitely had never put members of the cartel in prison like on their own before. Wow. Um, and so people were very inspired by her fight, were angry at her death. And so they placed a bronze plaque honoring her in the central plaza of the town. Um, the BBC even reported that the Thursday after her death, mothers protested in Mexico City holding portraits of their missing children during an anti-government march. And uh, as I was texting Allison, like, I'm covering the story this week, she was like, man, I can't believe it's not a feature film yet. And then I discovered that Bloomhouse, excitingly, has acquired the rights to the story and oh, is wow. uh, planning to make, I believe, a feature film or maybe a show, I'm not sure, about her story. So wow. I think this is not the end of us hearing about Miriam because the article came out in December. So it's a very recent uh, wow, like story. brand new, hot yeah. off the press. Wow. Yeah. Whew. Whew, sorry, that was long, but that is uh, that's the story. Wow, Miss Miriam. I'm glad. I'm glad there's going to be a TV show where <laughs> Miriam Neeson. I'm glad there's going to be some sort of uh, show about that. That first of all, it really does feel like it should be a movie or something. Yes, it does. It does. I agree. But also, I think it'll be nice to. An honoring of her of like look, we recognize how fucking hard you you went with this and how like the effort you went in for it wow i have never heard of that story i guess it's me neither brand new but okay but also i was about to get mad at allison because i was like i live with her and she didn't tell me no about but she wants me to cover it for you yeah yeah, yeah. no I, that's why i decided to not be mad <laughs> also it's like, like a 10 page article so don't worry i read it for you yeah, that I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, well, that was a great story. I mean, oh, I I really it did not end the way that I wanted it to. That's I know that part just kind of sank my heart. But you would think after enough like spy action movie moves like that, yeah, like you only win at the that end. The like universe you, has your side. Yeah, yeah. Well. Anyway, good storytelling, Christine. Yay, thank you. You as well. This was a crazy episode, I think. It was way crazy. I was going to think of a different word, but then I couldn't think of one. Why? Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> Noodles. My Noodles. Gosh. Food. Sandwiches. Food. Oh, I have to go order fried chicken now, actually. I know, I'm so. hungry. <laughs> well, uh, thank you to everyone listening. Happy New Year. Hopefully things definitely go better this year. Hopefully, although who's to say? No Not jinxing us. it. Um. <laughs> Hopefully you have a lot of sandwiches in your in your future, and uh, that's it. I guess that's if it. you want to if you want to follow us, we're in that's why I drink dot com, and our socials are the M Schultz, X Teen Schiefer, and uh, ATWWD podcast. And ew, gross with three W's. And ew, gross. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys, and that's why we drink eat sandwich oh eat sandwiches okay. eat <laughs> fried chicken enough. eat fried chicken sandwiches fried okay chicken. <laughs> bye bye